everybody, and welcome to the Saint Seiya Cosmo cast. You're hearing my voice first today, which is strange. Uh, but, you know, every now and then we like to spice it up. This is Kamen Rider Furry KRF, your favorite host. Hopefully your favorite host. As always, I'm joined by Ben Haas. Hello, everybody. And Ramses is dead. Wait, tired. I'm dead? Wait, I'm dead? <laughs> dead tired. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, I'm dead? But I, I, I didn't know I was sick. But I'm... <laughs> You were very sick yesterday. <laughs> you well, were sleep the, deprived yesterday. Sick, sick in the brain. Sick in the brain. That's a very different. But yeah, so um, just to let so like okay, so like just really quick because like like today is I'm letting Con Rider take the wheel on this one because like I'm still kind of iffy from WonderCon, and so I'm like just just really quick everything like involving like um, housekeeping stuff. I'm gonna leave it to the end because I but I really I want you to like if this is your first time listening to the show, especially after everything we've done at WonderCon. Please stick around to the end. That's all I gotta say. So, why don't we waste no time? Let's get let's get into everything. Because like this is gonna be a news heavy episode, and also it's gonna be a WaterCon heavy heavy episode. So if like if you are interested in anything that's gonna be happening in the next couple of weeks for Saint Seiya involving the movie or anything else that's coming up, this is your episode. So, all right, hurry! I give you I give you back the wheel as we're going out, as we're going out as we're going as we're going down a cliff. I am. So this is my show now. I'm changing the title. This is the Common Rider Furry Show, and we're gonna talk about whatever I want to talk about today. And that's right. Saint Seiya news. Um, cool. So, <laughs> uh, so we've got uh, we're we're gonna bury the lead just a little bit because the WonderCon stuff is just a lot. But before then, we do have some fun news. Um, our resident manga expert Ben Haas has a lot of manga news for it. Well, a decent amount of manga news. I wouldn't say overwhelming, but it's still some interesting stuff that's coming up. So, Ben Haas, do you want to take it away with what is going on in? our manga sphere already <clears throat> yes well to do a little summary uh, like while there hasn't been anything very relevant like to pinpoint regarding the spin-offs and the other uh, mangas co- currently being published of the Saint Seiya franchise just to remind the audience that right now we have uh, several uh, spin-offs uh, currently running uh, which is uh, the, the one that has its latest chapter released where a uh, Saint Seiya episode G Requiem, as well as uh, Re-Rise of Poseidon Chapter 2. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so right currently we, we have Episode G Requiem, Re-Rise of Poseidon, we have Darkwing, and we have Saint Yeah Show Memories, which currently is taking a bit of a hiatus due to uh, Chimaki Kori Sensei's health being a little bit unwell since last year. Uh, we haven't really gotten any updates on that, but I'm sure that once she's feeling well and able, she'll return to mm-hmm. that. But for now, it's still ongoing, but it's going to be like on hold for a bit. But the main news and the news that are, you could uh, you could say the most important regarding the, the manga is the actual uh, <clears throat> continuity, uh, the main sequel, which is Saint Seiya Next Dimension, written and illustrated by the creator himself, Masami Kurumada. After 17 years, like because the, this this batch of chapters that are going to start releasing are going to be the last ones and will basically be the end of Saint Seiya Next Dimension, the Myth of Hades, the story that he's been writing and illustrating since 2006, making it 17 wow. years in the making and mm. finally coming to a conclusion. Whether this is the end of the the story itself or whether it's just the end of the beginning, we're not sure yet. <clears throat> we'll have to wait and see. But it has been announced through Kurumada Pro and through the Weekly Shonen Champion number 17 magazine that uh, Next Dimensions Next Dimensions chapter 103, which is the next one to be published, will be so on April 13th on the magazine's 20th volume. This will begin the publication of, of these final chapters, which have been pre- previously announced to be 16 to conclude this part of the story. Okay. It's so wild that it's been going on for that long. I didn't. I guess I just didn't realize that that it'd be going on for seventeen years. I, I think yeah. also. Go on. I was just gonna say. Uh, well, say what you were gonna say first, Ramses. Then I'll say my. I was, I was. I was gonna say. I think like I think the format of of uh, of next dimension. I believe is like a monthly series. So it's seventeen month. It may be. It may be seventeen years, but it's like seventeen years divided by twelve. So like by by by, even though it's it's been longer than the original series by like. By, by by like almost like by almost like by, by almost like ten more years. Um, it has it's been published. It's been published. And it, he's been doing it publishing. He's been publishing by like weekly, like not weekly, every month. And I was I'm actually the I was asking another question because when was the last time we had a chapter of the of this of um next dimension? 
Uh, I'm trying to remember, but it was def definitely on 2021, not 2022. Wow. So I think it, I think it was by near December 2021. Like it was, it was definitely. It started publishing around October or September or August. Well, around that time frame. So okay. it was end of the year of 2021, and until now we're getting these final chapters. But that has been one of the, and that's actually the thing that I was going to mention previously. One of the things that is most criticized about Next Dimension rightly so to a degree but also you have to look at the circumstances behind its publication it has been a very irregular uh, publication since the very beginning this has to do with uh, masami kurumada's health this has to do with his age and this has to do with the fact that he has been working on other stuff simultaneously as well uh, fans of saint seiya itself may not care for the other work that he has been doing but that is mainly the reason why the publications have been so irregular and it's one of the things that, like, it's been the the most common criticism amongst the amongst the fans that it's been it's taken too long for what they consider next dimension to be, which you could argue it's a it's the opening stage for what could be the the war against uh, Olympus or the war against Zeus. So, and there and a lot of people argue that why didn't he not go there from the very beginning? But Kurumada has always been an author that. He has a vision, and uh, he will take his vision as he sees uh, appropriate. Mm -hmm. And he has given us interesting and more in-depth look at the universe itself, n instead of just jumping onto the the war immediately. But that's a discussion for another day. That uh, that this story is finally coming to its conclusion, and we'll have to wait and see exactly what entails. But another, alongside that, there was another announcement recently by Kurumada Pro this time that. The 14th volume of Next Dimension, which contains chapters 96 to 102, which were the latest chapters released in the previous batch, will be released and sold on April 7th in Japan. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so I'm pretty sure they're capitalizing just before the movie comes out, like two weeks beforehand. They did mention at one point that the movie coming out, like like this month, April, is kind of like a, an amalgamation of a celebration of Saint Seiya. Something like that they, they mention it being as... So it's somewhat intentional, the release date. Yeah, that sounds all right. So it's like, and yeah, I mean, I, I'm really happy that they have to continue this. Like I said, like like you mentioned, it's like Kuruma is not just, is not just Mr. Saint Seiya. He's done like uh, Fuma no Kojiro. Which I think that's the one he's been currently focused on right now. Um, he, he was basically finishing Otoko Saka, but he has also okay. been publishing uh, guidance for Fumano Kojiro. He, he, I think he has released two, two chapters two of Fumano Kojiro. So it's something relatively recent, but yeah, he has also been doing that. So yeah, he's so he's a man, he's a guy who like you know he's like a guy that's been just been busy doing all, all like other stuff. So, like it's like I, I think I mentioned this before on this podcast, or you know, I may have mentioned it somewhere else. Um, the thing about um, Masami Kuramata is that he's very much he's very much in the, the old school mentality of like guys like Omasa Tetsuka, where he likes to like use the same characters at like what they call a star system, where yeah, it's star like system by Osamu Tetsuka. Yeah, where it's like <laughs> similar looking characters are in the series, but they're distinctly different characters. So like, and sometimes too, like, he might make allusions or might or might make like complete like references to other characters in his other works as well. I believe, um, I believe in, in the case of Saint Seiya, like I think he was, I think what he was trying to emulate with with Seiya was, I think he was going for um, uh, Ryuji from from Rini Kakero. I believe that that was yeah. like, like a jumping a jumping off point for him. That has been the his main character's design ever since Rini Kakero, yes, because mm -hmm. uh, both Kojiro, well, Kojiro of the Fuma clan, uh, Ryuji, which is the protagonist of Fuma no Kojiro, Ryuji Takane, the protagonist of Rini Kakero. Ah, uh, Junpei, God, his name just saluted me, but but the, the protagonist from Otokasaka has the same design, just a sli slightly different uh, hairdo, and then comes Seiya, and th th he uses that system. A lot of yeah. people don't like that. I've seen comments, like, for example, another author that's more modern that gets criticized quite a bit for that is uh, Hiro, oh my God, the author of Fairy Tale. Oh, yeah. Oh, Hiro Mizushima? Yeah, Hiromashima. He also uses the star system, but and he gets criticized quite a bit by modern viewers that are not familiar at all with the star system. There's an argument to be made regarding that, but at the same time, I think people ignoring the history of manga and, and the reason why that happens as well, just... Mm, I think it gets very negatively... Negative, negatively... Goodness gracious, I forgot how to speak English. <laughs> 
it's 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 not it's not rightfully it's not rightfully okay to be judging him in that in that by the by, well, by I those, mean, by those measures. So many so many artists do that. Akira Toriyama does that. Everything yeah. you can you can look at any piece of work and instantly know in half a second if Akira Toriyama was even slightly involved. Because yeah, all okay. artists have that same feel to them. Like Luca, or is, I think her name is Luca from Chrono Trigger, Trigger. is yeah. literally just Bulma. It is also literally just the girl from Doctor Slump. Like they're all the same design, just slightly tweaked. But a lot okay. of artists do that. So, but the reason, okay, so uh, let's let's wheel this back into Saint Sam. Um, reason why reason why I brought that up is because like we know for a fact that like despite him not been working on the uh, next dimension since two thousand twenty one. December 2021, we know for a fact that he's been doing other stuff as well concerning Saint Seiya, like you know, it, within within this, within within the, like its own sphere. Like I do believe he's he did he's been going, working on the final editions um, touch ups as well, and also too he's been you know, he, and, and I'm pretty sure he's been working like hand in hand with the, with his with the people involved with the movie and also with the spin offs as well. I'm pretty sure he like he's working hand in hand with like the people the creator, with the creator side on on those things as well. So. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it's like you know, they're like yeah. So like for those that say like yeah, like you know, like for those that are kind of like saying that Kuramata is like lazy, no, it's just like he's got a full plate, and I'm pretty sure too. Like like the same stuff. Is, I'm, turning seventy this year, give the man a break. <laughs> Seventy two. No, se- I, I, I he was oh, okay. born in fifty three. I think I was trying to Google it really quick. Well, you know what? <laughs> if, that, if that's the case, I will just hand me that big piece of crow there, coming right for and just jam it down my yeah. Throat. He, it's December six, fifty three. So he'll be seventy this year. Yeah. Maybe so just year. just jam that's, it down my throat. Then that's wild. Though, like, the, I don't know. You you see you see like so many manga artists get burned out from you know work in the grind, and he's been going at it since the dawn of time. Is what it feels like. So it's like <laughs> and, 19, and he, like the it, like the it, early seventies working on stuff. Yeah, he he's been cons- he's always consistently working on stuff and. I still hear people in the fandom give him a hard time because he's not working on the specific thing they want him to work on. I was like, there's plenty of other manga cod that have had literally have one series that they're working on and still got burnt out. Like, look at Hunter Hunter, like not not dogging on that man at all. That man has a lot of health problems, but he just was working on the one thing at a time. Yeah. Kuramata's got like a billion things happening at the same time. And he's for lack of a better term, elderly, like I hate that word, but I don't know, like another respectable word to use in place there. Like he's getting up there, like give the man a break. If he wants to take his time, let him take his time. The fact that that he's well respected enough that they just kind of I- I'm sure there's there's some hammer that gets brought down occasionally, but he seems to just kind of make his own schedule and make his own like what he wants to work on when he wants to work on it. The fact that he's got that much respect, just give him the respect he deserves and let the man live. Exactly. You don't yeah. have to like what he's doing. You don't have to agree with his decisions. You don't have to, that that's the thing. There's a difference between respect and liking something. And mm-hmm. liking something is very personal. If you like it, perfect. If you don't, that's fine as well. That that's based on what you like, what you enjoy or how you view things. But you have to respect what the man does, how he does it, and considering all the factors on it. Not to mention the fact that while I don't think there has ever been given like an official report on exactly what his condition is, he has a, a physical ailment as well. In his drawing finger, mind you, on his index finger, he basically ha- has no cartilage anymore. And if anybody has seen how he draws, he basically puts all the force of his pen onto his index finger, which is the one where he doesn't have the cartilage anymore. And so he's basically using his bone to to draw. Mm-hmm. And he has that and actually revealed in a, in a very recent interview with uh, Carlos Lopez from Anime Music Lab, which is the, the person uh, in charge of organizing the Pegasus Fantasy Concert. He recently traveled to Japan and he was able to deliver the news to Kurumada himself about the concert. And he mentioned in an interview with uh, the podcast in Spanish, Universo Saint Seiya, that he revealed something interesting that he mentioned that Kurumada apparently has like a, a ball on his finger, a kind of like protuberance. So imagine still working under those conditions, his age, his health, and is still being able to pull all this off. Yeah. And, and like I said, and like I mentioned earlier, it's, not just say say it's all his other things he's been working on as mm-hmm. well and so it's like he like the man's insane just as you said the, the man's utterly insane and, and like call the props in the world 
I'm glad that we're getting more Saint Seiya things like this, and I'm glad that he's continuing it. But I'm also very grateful that he, like, for a man his age, he's still doing whatever the heck he wants, and still like doing, he's still mm-hmm. knocking out of the park. And speaking of, like, not to just incredibly shift gears here, but speaking of the symphonic experience, uh, we have a lot more information on part two, which is exciting. Um, I don't. We have dates. We had dates before, but now there's um, vocalists confirmed. Which is super exciting because the music in Saint Seiya is not not just the orchestral music, but like the actual vocalized music is really freaking iconic as well. Um, ben Ben Haas, or I guess either one of you, if you want to take over with that and just kind of lay it on us. Want me to take the lead on this one, Ramses? Go for it. Okay, so very recently on March fifteenth, for those of you interested, uh, last year when the Pegasus Fantasy concert was held. They announced at the very end that there was going to be a second part. So we've known that there's going to be a second concert since last mm-hmm. year. But there was a press conference on that day giving the details of the concert and going very in-depth regarding how it's going to be handled and what's it going to consist of and how it's going to be different or similar to the previous experience. First things first, uh, obviously the success of the first concert opened, if you want to think of it that way, the opportunity for them to to actually have a bit more layaway with toy animation, because now they have faith in the project, they have proven the success of the project, so they were able to get a, a, quite a few things. Uh, first things first, you will be able to notice if you look at the promotional material that they're actually using Araki-style uh, il- official illustrations for, for the concert. Uh, previously, they were using the ones of... Oh, goodness gracious, forgive me. I've forgotten the name of the illustrator, but the one that basically did the designs for uh, Omega. Oh, um, I forgot the name, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So now they're starting using it on the posters and on the character sheets, like a, a, a normal, well, not normal, Araki uh, material for that. Then they announced, uh, basically, the, the repertoire for seats is going to remain the same as last year. They're dividing it into zones. Uh, based on the on the location in the venue itself. You can look at this in their official website or in the Arena Ciudad de Mexico one. But basically, the, the news and the thing that caught, everybody up, uh, that caught everybody off guard was the fact that they added a new one. Because previously they only had a Golden Zone, which is the, the one closest to the, to the stage, then Silver, Bronze, Steel, and finally Soldier, which, is, which are the seats that are the farthest away from it. Yeah, Any seat mission. in the... Yeah, any seat in the venue is good because the way that it is uh, made and you can watch uh, very clearly and very well the the performers as well as the music. Uh, obviously, it's a matter of like how close you were to the stage and some of the things that the other, uh, for example, the the gold golden zone. The benefit that it had is that you got all the all the all those gifts. It, it, the most important one at the time being the Mitch Jimeno illustration made specifically for this concert. Mm-hmm. And now they're going to repeat that, and the Golden Zone is going to contain basically those same um, uh, gifts and th- that same merchandise. Uh, and it, there's go- it's been confirmed that there's going to be a new illustration by Michi Jimeno. They have officially announced what it's what it's going to be of. Uh, well, not what of, but Saga is going to be the character illustrated for oh, Jimmy Saga is going to be the character no. illustrated for this no. one. Yeah, I yeah, I so. That. Yeah, so th- that's going to be the one given. And I think there's also a set of pins based on the five bronze saints and their constellations. The, another A new gift that they're going to be giving for oh, the people cool. on the Golden Zone. That's going to be the, the, the other exclusive. However, the new zone, the Divine Zone, based obviously on the God, on the God Clots of, of the saints, is going to have a, a meet and greet with the special guests, which I'm going to jump a little bit for this one here. It has been announced that this concert will have official a special guest for it. Previously, on, on, la- on the last concert, uh, we did count with the official Latin American singer for the openings and the endings, which is Mauro Mendo, who is coming back again to this concert. But this time, they have officially announced, and the, uh, there is actually a video of both uh, Nobuo Yamada, as well, the, the singer of Pegasus Fantasy and Blue Forever, as well as, uh, as of Yumi Matsusawa, the singer for the opening of the OVAs of Hades, Chikyugi, they're going to be coming to, to Mexico and they're going to be participating in this concert. And if you are able to get a ticket in the Divine Zone, you will also get a meet and greet with them and have a couple of minutes to basically have a few words with them. And they, I think you, you get a, a photograph with them. Oh. Uh, they, they did mention the details of, of what it might, uh, of what that meet and greet was going to be. But basically, you're going to be able to hang out with them a little bit and take pictures with them. 
So yeah, that's, that's like a like a K-pop high touch concert. <laughs> yeah. So that 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 drove everybody insane. And there's going to be blood this Friday. Okay, jumping again a little bit. Tickets for start sale for the concert on March 31st, which is this Friday. As of recording. Be, yes, as of recording, beginning at 12 p.m. or at noon, a uh, Central Standard Time or Mexico City time. That's so when... it's like so ten o'clock. So ten o'clock Pacific time if you're like in, if you're in the Pacific. Exactly. So for anybody interested in that, take that into consideration. You can purchase the tickets online via the website uh, uh, superboletos.com, and you are. And I think it's going to be a little bit easier to purchase this, this time because I know that there are people from over uh, from other countries that had difficulty getting their ticket, but but I think it's going to be a, a bit smoother this time, or hopefully so at the very least. Do we have like a price range for tickets? Yeah, they actually did say that the the price the t- tickets for this. There is going to be a little bit of an extra cost because of the of the ticket sales, unfortunately. So this is the price in which the the the, the concert is being held at, but it's going to be a little bit more. Then that depends on on the on on the website and on the venue itself. But mm. okay, I'm I'm gonna say them real quickly. Uh, Soldier Zone, it, everything it's in Mexican pesos. So uh, please try to make the conversions because I don't have that on hand. <laughs> so the 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 lowest one, which is Soldier, is at six hundred and fifty Mexican pesos. Uh, uh, like one US dollar is around twenty pesos or so, more or less. So that you can keep it in mind. Uh, Soldier is at six hundred and fifty pesos. Uh, Steel Zone is at eight hundred pesos. Bronze is at fifteen hundred. Uh, silver at at twenty hundred, golden at thirty six hundred, and finally divine at forty five hundred. So basically, the... you're ta- basically you're you're just like poor shaming me right now. Uh, yes, that, that's a, <laughs> it's not me. I did not put the prices on that. Okay, well, I, it, it, I feel like it's you. Okay, so if you're after, if you're wondering because I was running down some of the calculations, the if you really if you really want to go, the, the very basic soldier, the very basic soldier um um seating, which is like well like you know the the what we like to call here in the United States stuff like you know the the, the peanut gallery or the or the, the Oakleyer um Oakleyer um seats, which is like we used to call that's what we used to call in baseball for like the really really cheap seats, those run you thirty two dollars American to get the divine ones, it, it's actually one hundred twenty five dollars, which is not which is like if like I'm pre- yeah I'm pretty sure to a Mexican that's a lot, but to someone that's like outside the United States that's actually not that bad considering that two hundred twenty five dollars for a concert here in the United States that's like that's that's nowadays like the cheap seats like if you're trying to get like a Taylor Swift tickets it's like twenty one twenty five you're you're in the you're in the nosebleeds. True, but so it's like so that's why I, 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 I don't want. know how that compares to like other symphonies here. Like I know that we have like the. Final Fantasy Symphony and stuff like that, but I've never looked into prices for it because um they're around the same price. I think like the general admission, like the like the general admission, like like the basic stuff, the basic area is like twenty five dollars American. But this was like five years ago, and like we had we've had a recession. Mm-hmm. We're, we're currently in recession. We've and things have inflated in price. So like yeah, we don't know. Like I don't know if that, that if that's bumped up like forty forty five dollars thanks to all that. Man, I would love to. At least get the gold one so I could get the illustration of Saga. Oh. Okay, so one last thing we'll, we'll, really quick before you, before you, before we move on. The guy you're thinking about the artwork is uh, Yoshihiko Ukamoshi. He is got, he currently right now is working on My Hero Academia. He also worked okay. on stuff like Hard Cash Hard Cash Cure and Cash and Sins and of course uh, Saint Seiya Omega. So like okay. yeah, thank you, thank you for clarifying his name. Get that real fluid, um, light feeling artwork. Yeah, I, I I know I saw I know I saw people's cup of tea. I love it because I love hard catch Precure. That's like one of my favorite Precure series. It's so, very like nobody take this the wrong way. But if you if you're unfamiliar with Omega or some of the other like hard catch and stuff, think of it if Winx Club was actually an anime, and that's kind of the the area like real bright colors, like pastels. Very yeah. stylized, like legs and things like that. It's it's, it's it's like it, it's like angular. The yeah, I just want to say it's very angular, like a lot of a lot of straight lines. But um, Heart but yeah, is so good, by the way. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're 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 making up. You're making up so much. So my quick thoughts on the, this concert, like it's really great that they're it's really great that they finally released the pricing. I'm really happy they're putting they're getting Japanese guests. Like it's, like you mentioned before, the the, the I'm pretty sure the representative of Toy and and Chroma Pro must have seen how the reception of the concert was. 
And because of that, now we're now they're, they're putting a little bit more effort into like bringing in a lot more stuff and doing a lot more stuff with the Mex with the with Mexico and also like uh, Latin America as well. Mm-hmm. Something we're gonna mention much later when we get to like some of the news about the movie. It's it it, it it's kind of incredible that at the same time that the movie is gonna come out, not just in Japan at the same time, but also in Mexico at the same time as well. So it's like they're putting a huge effort right now into like Mexico and. Mm-hmm. This is and just this just seems like like this this just seems part of like the that um that 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 push to get things there it like to push to get things to to increase the popularity in Mexico you know at that point at this time if that makes any sense I I like that though because it it feels like they're listening to what what people want and where things are popular like I I would love to be that delusional person that says that Saint Say is popular in the United States. But but it's not um and and it's a it's gonna probably in the u.s box office is probably gonna bomb like even if it was it, even if everything looked like it was gonna be the sterling example of what fans wanted from saint Seiya, it's such a a lesser known property i don't want to say unknown property in the united states but it's untested a much, much lesser known uh, yeah untested, and, and an untested property is, would be, would it's be definitely been right. tested just tested poorly um <laughs> but we'll get to that it, later it's it's kind of in the same vein of like the Battle Angel Alita movie that wasn't super popular in the U.S. but it was very popular elsewhere. Um, I'm trying and it was to, but, and it was also it was also a really good movie. But and then there was the Ghost in the Shell movie, which never mind. Yeah, <laughs> but no, but like some of these lesser lesser popular in the United States anime properties getting Hollywood adaptions. It's very smart of them to tailor it. Or at least give focus to the the I don't want to say the actual fans, but like the 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 ones that have been supporting this forever and view it as an iconic thing, like an iconic show. So I'm glad that they're making that effort to not just half-ass the promotion for you know Latin America and Mexico. Yeah, and I I, I will agree. I, I that, that that was gonna be my main point. Where it's just like you know the series, the ser- like we like like I said like like I said like I mean, like I mentioned before that. The um, series is like we like thanks thanks to the, thanks to the popularity of that first concert, it kind of gave um, Toy a kind of like a glimpse to how how things are working like in Mexico, and now they're gonna put like, like you can start we're starting to see the efforts of all all, all, those, all those things start to come through, and we, like I said, they're pushing you're gonna start pushing a little bit more stuff to be available, but right before for more fans before everybody else, and like I said, getting getting um getting these, getting these two amazing singers to come by from Japan. To, to to sing a couple of songs in, mm-hmm. before the concert is just incredible. It's like you know I know we can talk we can talk to the Casco home about the about the, 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 about the free swag and all the cool swag they're gonna get. But for me, I think like the biggest thing for me was was getting was getting those two artists, uh, Nob and uh, Yumi Yukisawa. I think those getting those two was I think like that 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 was like like that was one that thing that sold me the most that sold me the hardest on getting on one to go to it because. That the, I think that adds way more legitimacy to the to, to the seedings. Like not to, not to say that the last one was, but I think that just like, I think that's just sort of that just makes it more like it gives it a more official feel to it. If that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. And <clears throat> for example, there is a debate to be have there a re- and a topic maybe for another day regarding like because getting that is how to put it. You you could almost say that it's not overnight, but it, we haven't been held in very high regard for legitimate reasons as well as unfortunate. Uh, not uh, not very uh, logical ones uh, by the Japanese market, but finally doing something that finally has has brought the attention to that. Hopefully, this will be for the better. And uh, and for example, it's one of those things that that it shows. Uh, just to so that I can jump onto the, this next point, I'm just gonna say one more piece of information that's relevant for the concert, and then we can move to the next topic. Uh, they have mentioned what the soundtrack will consist of. It's going to last between two and a half to three hours. So obviously there are a lot. There's a lot of music of in of the Saint Seiya soundtrack. Wow. Unfortunately, not everything is going to be in there. But they're going to try to grab the the most um, iconic or the most memorable songs from various sagas, from basically all the sagas in the anime. They have confirmed that returning, they're going to be playing music from the Sanctuary arc, from the from the Twelve Temples arc which is basically the same arc but just to make the distinction the from the movie the battle of the gods from the the third movie the the shinkin no shonen the densetsu uh, from the, boys yeah from the asgard arc 
And new to this concert, they will be playing music from the fourth movie, which is uh, infamously known as the Lucifer movie, mm -hmm. uh, from the from the Poseidon saga, from the Hades saga, from all the all the the, the from Sanctuary, Inferno, and Elysium. Anybody that knows uh, a little bit about the the music of Sensei knows that there's not too many new compositions for Hades, but hey, what there is, there is, and it will be played there. However, they have been, and I have to state this just to clarify to somebody that might be making this illusion. They have stated very clearly that they will not be using music from the Tenkai Hain Overture movie due to licensing rights. They did not go into more detail about that. It's just not going to happen. Just to uh, for so that people know and don't create any uh, expectations regarding that. Yeah, and and also I hate to let you guys know. I I know everybody is so pumped about the pink song from 2019 that's been out for years. <laughs> they're using for the Saint Seiya movie, but she will not be attending either. I'm so sorry. I'm very sorry. Shocked. I, I, everybody's really story, upset yeah. about it, but we're we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on with our lives. We're just gonna listen to that same album that's been out for I repeat four years now, um, and just move on with our lives. Yeah, sounds that sounds like a good idea. But like, I'm still, can can I just say for what like for real talk? Why did they? That's such a weird song that they picked for the movie. I know we're about to transition into the movie, but that's uh, such a strange song. You know, it's been it, out for a while, and it was it wasn't popular when it came out. I'm, I'll, I'll tell you this much right now: when it comes to like when it comes to like when when it comes to like when it comes to editing, like when it comes to trailer editing and stuff like that, a lot of times the the people who are involved with it, it's always got third company. That and usually one yeah, of their they're, they're billing this like it's the theme song of the movie. Like it, it in the Japanese trailer, it even had like a little like thing, yeah. uh, like insert where it told you the name of the song and stuff. Like they like to do for anime intros. Well, that's what they, that's what they do people. for like they, that's what they do for any song really. But so it's like you know, I'm pretty sure what ended up happening is they, they must the, the people who are editing the the, the song at whatever place they were are like they were trying to find a song and I'm pretty sure someone some someone was like had someone else had like their Spotify on and had like their pick mix on and like oh this song fits. I to be more realistic, just because of how the movie industry works, it was probably cheap. That too. The rights to it were probably cheap because it's not. I don't think it was one of her singles. If it was, it wasn't one that charted real well. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's basically. I was gonna say free publicity, but they had to pay for it. So she's getting paid for her song to like be back at the limelight for a few minutes. So I mean, like more power to her. But I there's just oh they they could have. Pick a better song. On another cover of Pegasus Fantasy, they could have done something um, more in the metal sphere of I'll, that. I'll, like, I'll tell you this much right now. Um, during the presentation, I wonder, the, the Sun presentation, they played a remix of Pegasus Fantasy, like an orchestral version, like a half orchestral, half rock version. That um, during during the present during during like the, during a video during like just some like, like a sizzle reel of the for the behind the scenes like stunt work, and it theorized that might be the main theme of the movie. I hope so. <laughs> and it sounds I, really, I, remembering back in that the panel, like, oh shit, that was a good, that was a cool song. But again, I'll we'll talk more about this when when the time comes. But I think I think I, I since you already transitioned us to our next topic. Why don't you transition us to movie talk? I I just want to say though before before that, um, I did accidentally roast somebody on Twitter, and I'm pretty sure they listened to our show. So I'd like to formally apologize if that was you. Uh, somebody was very excited to find out when the pink song was coming out. And I had to let them know that it's done been out. And that I kind of like clowned on them a little bit. So I'm sorry. <laughs> it just, I was in my feelings a little bit about pink being the theme song or the, the, the supposed theme song, the, the assumed theme song. I, I for, right now, for right now, for all of purposes, I'm just calling it the trailer theme song. Yeah, the trailer. It, it, I, I was a little bit of a feel, so I kind of roasted somebody who was genuinely excited to hear the full version of the song by letting them know that it's been out for four years. But I digress. Um, before we, so so WonderCon kind of overlaps with movie news, obviously, because that's the big thing they were promoting. But there were a few little tidbits from before uh, uh, that might have been talked to the WonderCon, but we definitely found them out like I would say a couple of days before or maybe as it was happening from other sources, um, mostly dates. Um, the most shocking of all of them, I was actually talking to Ben Haas about this off recording yesterday. Um, Italy, which is famous for being like the third most successful area, maybe the fourth, depending on how you, if France was a little bit more successful, but one of the highly successful areas for Saint Seiya is only getting a three-day showing for the movie, and they're not even getting it until the end of June, which is 
almost a full two months after most of the world will have already been able to see it. Like we thought we were getting shafted in the US, like they're getting super shafted. Um, because it's June 26th, 27th, and 28th as the Italian dates, according to the movie poster that got released. So if we have any Italian fans listening or any fans that um have a connection, like reminisce about the Italian version dub and all that. Very sorry that that's happening. Hopefully it'll get picked up for some more viewings, or maybe this is just like a expo for it. It'll have a regular release later or something like that. We're not really sure how the Italian movie market works. <laughs> like <laughs> Surprise, mm-hmm. we're not experts in that. Um, so this might be normal. I don't know, but it just seemed very weird that they're only getting it for three days especially with how popular the franchise historically has been there. So hopefully that gets a little bit more of an expansion to it. Um, but we also got some confirmation for like the Spain, the, the Spain Spanish, which is weird to say, um, but the European Spanish, I guess would be an easier way to say that the European Spanish trailer dropped. And yeah, the just for, for simplicity, simplicity sake, just say Castellano. That's yeah. not simple for me. I'm not going to remember that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But yeah, so so we've got we got a few dates. Did anybody want to jump in on that before we get into our fun WonderCon discussion? Yeah, I I do want to jump on that. Okay, so uh, to, uh, returning a little bit to that, I was actually very surprised because I found that out because I actually saw a lot of angry uh, messages on Twitter uh, from Italian fans like w- asking basically why uh, about the three dates. It's it's something that it's kind of baffling, and I don't understand what uh, what's going on there. We would definitely need to know more about the Italian mm-hmm. market or the the this. I I think it's Sony the one that's distributing, but I know that there it, there has to be like a national companies that make the deals with them in order to bring these movies there. So I don't know why why this is the case. Italy is definitely one of the markets that is most prominent in Saint Seiya. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's just baffling, and I don't understand. It's a decision that I don't understand. Uh, but well, moving on from that, because unfortunately we don't really have any information to go beyond that. Just sharing the news. Returning to the to the to the dubs. Okay, the the dub on the Cast Castellian or the the Spanish the from Spain, uh, and the Portuguese Brazilian trailers uh, have already come out because work on the dubs has has already been going for I think a couple weeks. Okay. So the 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 dubs of those trailers revealed something very interesting, as they refer to Siena very specifically a Saori. So mm-hmm. while it is speculation about the other characters, it is extremely likely that the that the names from the characters as they were introduced into those markets, which are the Japanese names, will probably be kept. The one that we are kind of like, like I've seen people doubting more, it's uh, Kido. Uh, it's difficult, for example, because Sean Bean is playing him, calling him Mitsumasa might be weird, so they may mm-hmm. keep Alman. But uh, I think the other characters, uh, I- I- Nero is definitely going to be called Iki. Uh, the, well, instead of Mylock, it's definitely going to be Tatsumi. Uh, so it's going to retain the, the original names, most likely. Did the That's what... did the the uh, Netflix use the original names for those dubs? Yes, it did. I believe okay. so. Yes, yeah. That, that, just, see, that, was... that just furthers my my theory that they're just. Whatever your country used in that Netflix 3D show, which is now Crunchyroll 3D show, is most likely the name that they're going to use. I've I've seen a lot of rumors going around that Toei is like dictating who can use what names. That please please stop perpetuating that. That is, as far as we know, unequivocally untrue. That yeah. Toei is dictating what you can name your characters. It's more about the the Netflix show made some choices. <laughs> And since that's the most recent thing that English speakers have to reduce confusion of going back and forth with naming conventions, they're most likely doing it that just to reduce confusion because people are going to see promotion for the movie or maybe even go see the movie. And if they want to watch additional things, the only thing that's really available besides like late series or uh, like Lost Canvas or something like that is going to be the 3D show and it's going to use the mm. same naming convention. So I just, I, my personal theory is that it's just to reduce confusion in the market. And if they opt to go for toys, which so far the 3D animated show and the movie, neither one. Um, have shown any United States side toys at all. But if they do, that will also reduce the confusion of being able to interchange the names on products and things like that. It's just a business thing. But please stop spreading rumors. I see so many rumors and I'm 
if you follow me on Twitter, you probably see me get into Twitter fights with people over misinformation because I feel very passionate about it. So for my sanity, please just don't. <laughs> I plead with you. Um, but that, yeah, I digress. Um, Ramses, did you have any more comments that you wanted to make about the the foreign dubs and the release dates that we found about the movie before we move on to basically you talking to us for an hour? Okay, Here's, first things first. Dates. Um, one, I'm really happy. Thank you, awesome. Congratulations. You're getting, to, you're getting to see the movie first. Awesome. So I'm really Yay. happy. You get, so you know, I'm really happy. So I'm really happy that you're going to get that. Um, the second thing that kind of like, like the second thing, the thing that kind of like, that, that didn't dawn on me immediately, but it dawned on me eventually was there was no dates for China or for Southeast Asia, like, you know, like Thailand and, and Malaysia. Which is stuff that, like, mm-hmm. that I, at the time, I thought that we were gonna put, do a more of a push because of like the mobile game. I thought they were gonna make a huger push for that to get it earlier. But no, Mexico was gonna get it first, and that they're, they're the first people out out of Mex- outside of Japan to get it first. And I thought China would get it even earlier, but no, there's no date for them. So that's the thing that caught that caught my attention because I I was for certain that that that, 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 that they would get they would get it first. And here we are, and Mex- Mexico's getting getting it this to be the first one out the gate. So yeah, I mean that 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 shocked the hell out of me that they that they um that that that's what they're doing. And so it's like I believe that that some parts of Southeast Asia have already been confirmed. I believe in Malaysia, I think they're gonna get it on. I believe they're around the twenty seventh of July. So they're gonna get it like three months later. And I don't. I think because I think I know why we're not gonna get it in China just yet. It's because I think they gotta they gotta make certification for China first, and then they gotta put a date on it. So like I think like when we when that happens, I think we like about a month afterwards. That's usually what happens with a lot of movies, like, especially with like MCU movies, where it's uncertain when a lot of a lot of foreign movies come out because like, I think they have like a foreign embargo where they want to have more foreign they want to have more more movies in the, like in the country being out first before foreign movies. So they mm-hmm. have to like submit an application to them. And then usually, usually a month after that, that's when we get like a date. So I'm surprised that we that they didn't submit it sooner and stuff like that. But you know, maybe, maybe I think I think they want to have it. They want to have it at a certain date to like present it to to, to the Chinese um to Chinese government or Chinese people who like you know involved with the Hollywood stuff, but in their in their in their entertainment stuff, and then just and then present and then like they can present the date like a month. So that's the first thing that caught my attention. Second, that second thing that caught my attention, and it's something that goes hand in hand with something I posted as well. That we got an MAP, the uh, an MPAA rating from the from the United States here for the movie. It's gonna be rated PG thirteen for violence and, and stuff like that. You know, you got your typical like superhero like warnings on, on on your thing. Mm-hmm. If you're, it, it, it's no shock. It's, it's on one hand, it's no shock that 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 we're ta- that, that 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 has a rating, especially since it's like now we know it's about a month away, a month or two away. Which, but, but this is what what in, but what this actually means is the movie's done. The movie is absolutely done. It's in the can. There's there's no there's no there's nothing gonna be made more. It is absolutely done because like if someone already put a rating on the movie, it already ha- it already means someone's seen it and they are, and he already kind of approved it. That same thing with the, and this goes hand in hand with the dubs. The dub means that like if there's already a dub already, that means most likely there is there, the movie's already completed already. So well, I mean, yeah, I I would say so because I mean we're getting close to the international release dates and everything for these and they want to make sure everybody's got their everything in hand for a go date so i would hope that it's finished by now <laughs> but and then lastly something that's in th- that was interesting i want to bring up before we move on is that we we may have got like okay even more simpler the european spanish the european spanish version there's a there's a dub for it there's a dub in Portuguese. yes it's interesting yeah, that we didn't get a we didn't get a dub in latino spanish the reason for that, apparently, like I mean, I'm hearing as info on that as well. There is definitely going to be one, but the thing is that apparently, uh, you know, it's it's a business, so like deals have to be made, people have to move, and like the stuff has to be put on work. It's been confirmed that the the Spain as well as the Brazilian markets have been working on this at the very least for a couple of weeks before the trailer came out. So they have like already a head start on working on this thing, but apparently recordings for the Latin American dub only just begun this week, according to rumors oh, okay. and information that some people have. So it is definitely going to happen. The thing is that it just was not ready under any circumstances to be made for for the for the trailer when it was published. So it there was just no way that it could be done by the time that the trailer launched internationally. Mm-hmm. So that's why the the Mexican Sony Pictures. Uh, 
uh, account only posted it with subtitles, but there is definitely going to be a Latin American dub for it. Um, I was going to say, like, one last thing we were overhearing. This is more like a joke more than anything. A lot of people want the guy, the, the guy who originally the voice Phoenix in the in the original dub for the cartoon to like come back as 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 he, as Nero slash Iki for this dub. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> don't do it. Because the guy, because the guy has like this really like deep dark voice. He sounds a bit like this. I'm like, that does not. Whatsoever, it's yeah, the weirdest starring um, voice ever. I'm like, oh god, why? It's a very unfortunate thing. But as much as, for example, there are a lot of people like ha having the original voice actors uh, for the characters is something that's very important also in in the culture here. Yeah. But you also have to be realistic that sometimes a, a type of voice does not necessarily fit uh, a type of character. And unfortunately, because this is a flesh, a human actor. You cannot have the same process as giving it to a cartoon because he has voiced Iki in basically every iteration that has been dubbed in Latin American uh, Spanish. Okay. He bo he voiced him in Legend of Sanctuary. He voices yeah. him in the in the in both season one and season two of of the of the CGI show, and he's probably going to continue for season three as well if that ever comes out. That probably will, uh, but. But the thing is, having him for the movie, apparently, first of all, apparently rumors say that that will not happen because they went for entirely new actors that have nothing to do with the franchise. And second of all, yeah, unfortunately, even though I do love his work and he's an amazing voice actor and he still does a terrific job with Iki, it's not the same to watch him yeah. in a car voicing a cartoon character, where, well, an animation character, I should say, than voicing an actual human being. Yeah, especially it's a hu a, a, an, actual, an actual character, like an actual human character that's like... Three, that's supposed to be like like a half his age at this point. So it's like yeah. you, you got a guy like you got it's like if you, that, that that voice comes out of the other thing, it's like that is a hard that is like a hard twenty a hard a hard like a very hard twenty year old like you know like those like those like that really, really hard life. And so it's like, but yeah, I mean, other than that, like that that's 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 my that's my only big thing. That's one of the big things I wanted to discuss about the, about the movie itself because I, I kind of want to get I kind of want to get us through to the next big topic, which I think was going to be the trailer. Yeah. I, yeah, because, well, it, I, I was going to ask if you wanted to talk about that since they did sort of premiere it at the the convention, even though I think we got it a little bit earlier before the actual. Yes. And that's uh, why. And that's why. And that was really one. Really and that's why I want. That's why. That's why I wanted to put it before we go to the WonderCon topic because I did see it as it dropped as well. Like I, literally, as like I was, I was like resting my feet, and I see that, and I then Twitter's just exploding with like information. Like what? Like first. Thing, we got was like the, was the poster and then we got and then all of a sudden we got the the trailer so it's like you know um so come right for, for well, if you want to take if you want if you wanna, uh, can, set us up for for the trailer can i say though that uh the the cuz cuz we're we're starting to move into the happenings at wondercon and something i saw before i saw the trailer um and this is probably more of a me thing because i don't live in a really big city um or I have I don't frequently visit big cities unless you count Chicago and ever since the pandemic I really haven't been there. Um, but something that I've been told is very common to see in uh, like LA is like very specific promotions for movies like big billboards, big signage on the sides of buildings, on buses uh, and things like that. So when when you posted the picture of the Anaheim Convention Center with the big Saint Seiya banner just going across the front of it. Like, I think that's when it hit me that this is real because it's so easy, especially since we've kind of moved to the advent of streaming to really feel the impact and weight of some of, some of these films that are coming out. And uh, something that you'll touch on later is that the movie definitely has more weight when you see it on a big screen. Mm -hmm. um, but, but just seeing that, it legitimately exists and it's not just some internet, you know, little niche that's going to be tossed off. Like they're putting at least some faith in it made me feel more confident in this movie. And the trailer also made me feel a lot more confident in this movie because the, the trailer, we got a full two minute trailer, like a full blown trailer. This will most likely be our final trailer because we're so close to the release of the movie. Um, sometimes they, they'll do like a slight re-edit um right before but you know this is for all intents and purposes this is our final trailer mm -hmm. we got to see a lot we got to hear nero talk which was that that's the part that took my breath away um there's a part towards the end of the trailer where uh 
Phoenix Nero slash Iki is just kind of like you didn't think you were the only saint around or the only saint in town or something like that. Yeah, and the only, they, you're, not, like, you're not the only knight in town. Yeah, and then they, they they he starts to punch him, and then it like cuts off before we can see the action. But we do get a glimpse of his cloth. We I, I think that the the mistake that they made, and it was an intentional mistake. I feel like is that they in the first little snippet that we got the more rough knight armor, saint armor, whatever you want to call it, that we saw was most likely the black knights. Because mm -hmm. this the the actual Pegasus armor looks much better than the glimpses that we were seeing in the trailer, and I think that people just got a little bit too upset too quickly. Um, I mean, if you still if you see it in this trailer, you still like it, then your thoughts are justified. But I think a lot of people saw that like thirty second snippet that we got several months ago and took that to be what the movie was going to be, and we kept stressing on this specific show. That's not it. Like that, that's not all that you're gonna have. There's gonna be more. The effects are gonna be more fleshed out. They're gonna be more finalized. And they are. They they actually delivered on it. The special effects look really cool. Um, I am really, really liking Marin's design. I know we got to see mm -hmm. in the like second trailer sneak peek, whatever you want to call it. We got to see her a lot better. We get to see her in action here and doing some kind of cool stunts. There's a lot of things that happen in this trailer. A lot of, if you pay attention to dialogues, things that we were unsure about that are confirmed now, especially after the WonderCon panel, like a lot of the doubts or kind of questions that we had that we weren't sure, such as like, is there going to be one Black Knight because we only saw one in the trailer or are there going to be more? And now we have an answer to that. Things like yeah. that have got revealed. So um, Ben Huss, what was your what was your takeaway from this trailer? Three things. First, my own personal uh, response to the trailer again was positive. I really liked it. I I, I think that it's a very a much better how to put it. It's what you would expect a trailer to be shown before any other movie that you go to see, like in, antici mm -hmm. in anticipation of what is going to be shown on theaters later that year. It's something that is what you expect to see. So. Whether they do that or not, because I don't know how they're handling promotion, which finally, I want to get, to get into that a, a little bit later, but finally, now that they're promoting the movie, this perfectly fits. And I really like the trailer. Uh, that was my personal view on it. Then after that, while obviously there are still people out there that are extremely critical, and um, not just in the critical aspect of it, of actual criticism, but, you know, crossing the line to just be a borderline insulting the project itself. Obviously, there's still going to be a lot of people on that. And whoever has their mind made up, you cannot make, uh, you cannot change those people's minds. And that's not the intention. But what I did see that was very positive is that despite all that negative negativity that still, that still surrounds the project and it's still out there, I saw much more positive reaction to this trailer. To the point that I think that the best way that I can describe it is I saw people that have had zero ex expectations for it have expectations for it. That's like, it might not sound like much, but considering where where they were and seeing the type of comments that they made afterwards, where they actually show either excitement or at the very least interest in watching the project, that tells you a lot of things. Okay. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure you, I'm pretty sure you guys are going to, you guys, you guys got to take it to me. So, okay, uh, um, this is, this is going to be kind of weird, because like, I actually had an opportunity to watch this trailer on a big screen, and you guys had, uh, most of you have seen it on your on a computer, or, on, a, uh, or on, on your phones, but I'll tell you this much right now, seeing it in like a big screen, seeing it like project to, to us on a, on a huge screen, because like they have these huge screens at where I was sitting at, on a side, like, you, there's the, if you're wondering how the room was set up, the, basically there's two... There's these two projectors on, on each side, and then you have like where the presenters are. And what they do is they have they what they do is that and those big projectors they show off like the they show off that's where they show off footage for stuff like like they're gonna show off. And also too like if they want to show off like it's so, so the people in the back can see the actors and stuff like that, they can get a good glimpse of the actors like from the people all the way in the back the back of the room as well. Mm -hmm. So that's why that so I had an opportunity because I was like sitting up front like not up front like like front row. I want to say I'm the second or third row because like. The front row is always reserved for um, like press, and like the like the first okay first row is always reserved for press. Second row is reserved for like for people with disability. So I got to be like in third row, which is technically first row for like for like plebs like me. So um, so I got to so I got to so I got to like essentially see it like up close a lot of I got to see it up close and the movie is so 
it look, the movie looks so much better when you see it on a big screen. Like, don't don't watch like like if you're gonna make a decision, uh, you see it on like a computer screen or you see it on your on your um, phone, you're not getting a full picture. There's stuff like like the thing that struck me the most about this is like, and this is in stark contrast. Like, I think I think I explained to you guys our last episode or episode before that because I because before that I had seen um, Ant Man: The Lost Quantum Mania, and while it is colorful at times, that movie, um, it's like there's times where it's like I can't tell if that's Paul Rudd or if that's Gen- Jonathan Majors talking sometimes. If you know what I mean? Where it's like it's so dark because they had to hide some of the like because uh, they had to because they had to rush the movie out for special effects reasons. That they kind of like had to like they had to like play coy and not show off a lot of it. They had to be in a lot of dark places to hide a lot of those a lot of those negatives. That said, um, when I see this movie, it still feels like there's like there's it still feels like there's a lot of dark things. But there's moments in that movie that caught my attention because like it, that feels very bright, and you can tell when they do the bright then they like up the brightness on a lot of things. It's something very important that that that's what's catch your attention. Like and it makes sense, and now I'm seeing a lot more sense. Like why Marion has like a darker suit than she usually does. They usually wears like red, red and black. Now it's like kind of like a um, kind of like a wine red, like a deep red, like purplish red, like black and black. So it's like it, it, it's it's those subtle colors. But when she starts when she throws off her when she when she throws off her um, mirror 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 punch to Saya in the trailer, you could see like the colors just clashing when she when her when she does her Cosmo attack. And when she starts to cosmos and then she unleashes her attack, it's a stark contrast. It makes you like it strikes you right in the face, like this is what they're trying to do. Like this is a character. And as and like I said, I'm gonna explain more what they what they said. Like, that, that was an intentional design, that's a design choice, and I respect that they're trying to do that where it's like it's the the, the world's kind of muted, but whenever they do their special things, it's like it the, the colors just instantly hit you, and the colors hit you perfectly. And when we get, to, like I said, when we get to the movie later, there's the, they, like they fought for a lot of those types of things, and I really do appreciate that a lot of the actors fought for like so much things. And like I said, the, the, like I'm, I'm watching the trailer right, like you know, without no no sound. I, I've been repeating for like the last couple of weeks when I knew that we were going to be talking about. It. And like I said, like the, the, my my like what I like is that like the movie, it's you know, and how, uh, the movie looks incredible, especially on the big screen. And what I like is, and something we're gonna get to, and not this, not this first, um, not in this first panel, but in the second panel, is you gotta respect the wire work. Now, a lot of stuff what they're doing is like all practical, or for the most part, practical as they can get. So they're not, they're not skipping, they're not skipping, they're using, they're using the CG wisely. And whenever you see a lot of the stunts, it's like it's they're for reals being tossed around like through wires and stuff. So I really do appreciate that they're really they're sticking to something I really wanted them to do from the very beginning, which was make the movie as practical as you can. I understand that you can't do practical when you're uh, when you, when you want to, you can't, like when it comes to these kinds of type of movies. You got like it's always easy to take the easy way out and make it not practical. But they went as practical as they can. The cloths are practical. The, they, they said like the, the some actors have said like the black the black the, the black knight costumes that they had to wear those clunky big suits. That's all practical. They had to wear that. They had to do stunts in that. They couldn't see shit out of that, those costumes. Um, they had to do, like in one in one instance they had to do a take twenty seven times and they and they broke one of the rigs so it gives you so I'm seeing this trailer again seeing all the stuff that they they're doing especially like uh, especially when you see like stuff like oh when you see the when you see the Pegasus cloth and when you see the the the, the Black Knight's cloth and when you see uh, Nero and his and his uh, Phoenix cloth um when you see all that stuff it's all practical it's all something that's not something they just see CG on like what he do with Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man. Oh, that that, that is a suit that Makenyu and the Otinoko are wearing themselves, and you can feel it. So that's why it's that's why it, that's why it kind of feels kind of clunky the, the armors. And it's something that like I want to briefly go around the, the interview that they did that they did with the director for um a couple couple of days back just before the convention. And it was like, like I said, there was never no, really any big news that came out of it. Um, the, the only big news I can think of that came out of that um that, that came out of that um that interview was the fact that you know that the that he, the uh, that he, he that the guy actually grew up watching them he got, grew up watching it in Poland which is I love to, I love this I love to hear like the stories from like other Polish like you know Saint Seiya fans if, like they, and their stories about it but he also mentioned the fact that like the clots he, he got to he got to mention about the clots and like and this goes back to what you're about uh, the complaint that you're, that you're hearing in that they're, they're ever evolving everything mm-hmm. is ever evolving in the movie. And it's something I've been overhearing. That it's something I overheard so much with uh, with the movie. It's like evolution. Like we're seeing stuff that there's things we're seeing stuff right now that, that might be kind of like when we first saw the things, it was still very rough. But things are now starting to look a little bit more. They're trying to look a little bit better, and we're starting to see a lot more things evolve. 
And that's not talk. Thing. Sorry to interrupt you, but let's not talk about that because it's it, okay. The comparison has been made to death. Yeah, by people that are criticizing the movie. It's like, oh, just ignore that when, whenever you hear that on- online. But the fact that today, uh, precisely, uh, IGN Latin America published an article saying, the fans think that the Saint Seiya movie will be Saint Seiya Evolution, like Dragon Ball was. I was like, oh my... F- um, like I said, I'll, have, I'll, I'll, I'll post my thoughts later. But all I gotta say is, um, and I think you may have heard this too on other, on, because like you were a part of these, you were part of these podcasts with uh, Bollux and Guayas of Junini and with Cesar of DQ. Like they were saying, like, and also I think too, also uh, Mao, who was also there at, at the show, we all kind of came to the conclusion of like, if they're, it's gonna be Dragon Ball Evolution, they're gonna have to work their asses off for it. Like it's, it. Trust me, it's not going to be Dragon Ball Evolution, and this trailer alone is proof that like it's not going to be that at all. And when I get to stuff, when I talk about stuff much later with the cast and crew and all that stuff, it's going to become very evident that that's not going to be the case. So I'm like, well, so let's put a pin on that. But I like I want to, I kind of want to approach that really quick and just like let's put a pin on it. Like let's leave that for later. But overall thoughts on that trailer, it looks great. But like I said, like I'm kind of biased because I I saw it first in the, on a big screen. And I got to see like a lot of that stuff up close, and when I see all that stuff up close, it like it it hits you, it hits you really hard. What they were trying to achieve, and it looks so much better than you than you than you watching it like on, on a computer screen, stuff like that. I know I've emphasized like that so much, but it can't be stressed enough that like 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 what you're seeing right now, like on like what you're seeing right now, cannot be. St- I cannot stress enough that like if when you see it on a big screen, it makes a world of difference. I just just for posterity i guess would be the right word to do that exercise caution obviously we're covid still exists so if you're gonna go see a movie you know take we 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 would love it if you could see it in theaters i believe all three of us are planning to go see it in theaters Mm. safely make sure you're being safe obviously if you're at health risk and you need to wait for you know, it to come out on like iTunes or something like that for you to be able to watch it or streaming somewhere. That is okay too. Yeah, but, well, but we're not forcing. We're not going to force you to watch. Yeah, it, but I, I just I, wanted to stress that because I I don't you. want it to skew. It, I'm not saying that you were skewing that way. I just don't want anybody to, to misinterpret what you're saying because I understand Ben Haas. I'm I'm sure understands what you're saying as well. Probably most of the listeners are understanding, but just in case, don't don't be reckless with it if it's going to be a detriment to your health like if you have health concerns or if you're living in an area where that's still a very serious like uh, not that it's not serious in the united states where i'm at it's still fairly serious and i yeah you're like like like, 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 like los angeles as a matter of fact but we also have vaccinations that you know are very readily available for those people that are wanting to take them so uh, if you live in an area or or a country or something like that where it's not safe yet to go back to cinemas don't stress yourself you are not going to break or went over the box office by yourself. I promise. Yeah. Um, but but that being the- said, if you can see a theaters, I just, I, you know, we, um, I can't talk today. Um, ben Haas and I talked to Ramsey's basically as soon as he got back in from Anaheim and well, he took a little nap, <laughs> a little nap, by, a little nap by like 12 hour nap, a, a forceful, a forced nap. But then we, we talked to him and I like I've not heard I, I've known I've known Ramsey's for a little over a year now, um, at least personally known him um, for that long. And I've not heard him talk that passionately about something in a very, very long time. So I 100 percent believe you. Um, I don't personally go to the theaters a lot just again, because I do I, I do have a couple of health risks that we've kind of talked about a little bit in the past. Yeah. Um, so, but I'm going to make an exception for this and I'm going to do it as safely as possible. Of course, and I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that I am taking care of myself. And that's what I want everybody else out there to do. If you, re- if you do want to go see it and support it and, you know, we would love for you to just do it safely. Go watch it with the old people at like 10 in the morning. Yeah. The, do the, uh, and, the matinee. <laughs> yeah. Do the matinee at like 10 in the morning, wear your mask, you know, be with the old people. Cause like they're like, they, they stay quiet and they, they know that they also like stay away from, from everything. So you can like, have like the upfront by yourself and just enjoy it, man. That's what, that's what I do. That's so what I, I always do. I like to do that anyway, because my experience of going to see movies on opening weekend, it never mm-hmm. fails. I'll get in the, the theater with the, really obnoxious teenagers that are there to hang out and not to actually watch a movie. Yeah. And um never ends well. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put it that way. 
Um, but yeah, so we we had our trailer. Um, I feel so so my personal revelation is that um I was sitting here watching the the trailer and I believe she's going by Gerard, she just female instead of male, correct? The Gerard, yeah. The antagonist, sort yeah. of the semi antagonist. Um I was thinking that that uh, again, don't I, I feel like people cringe every time. I thought it was the person that played Erica Benton in the Jim and the Holograms movie. They do look similar, <laughs> but it's actually the woman who played Jean Grey in the X-Men yes. films. And that's why mm -hmm. she looked so familiar to me. I wasn't connected the dots. I was like, this woman looks so familiar. And I guess because I've just been, I've had Jim on the brain for the past couple of months that I was Jim, like, Jim I was, it was her, but I was doing research last night and it is definitely not her. They do look similar though. Like, Especially in the Erica Benton makeup and hair, they look very yeah. similar. But no, it's it's definitely Jean Grey, which is hilarious. Um, because and she 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 alluded, she, and she alluded to that in the panel, by the way. Yeah, the, I mean this because this is another franchise that because when when the X Men movies came out, it was a similar fanfare. Like there was the the people that fondly remembered the '90s cartoon, and there were some people that were still keeping up with the comics. But it wasn't. This was way before the advent of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It was mm -hmm. a huge risk that they took. Like it, it, it was, it, it paid off, I guess. Um, but yeah, like I, I remember so many people having very similar reactions to like, oh, I don't like the costumes. They look too modern, and they're they're not representative of the comics or the cartoons or whatever. And oh, the the effects look cheesy. The acting doesn't look great. It looks like they might have miscast this person, this person. But in the end. Even even though it focused on such a small group of the larger cast of X-Men, similar to how Saint Seiya is going to focus on... Or sorry, Knights of Zodiac. I keep calling it Saint Seiya. Knights of Zodiac. Call, it's, it, it's either or. I, 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 at the panel, they, they kept on calling it... They kept on like flat flipping back and forth. Also, so don't worry about it. Knights of the Zodiac, Saint Seiya at the beginning is going to focus mostly on Seiya um, from what we've been able to tell. Uh, Actually... So, Somebody Actually, let me know that there's going to be somebody else in the film potentially, and I was not happy about learning that information. Well, uh, um, I'll, I'll tell you this much right now. According to some reports, because like from, because like some people have already seen the movie, and apparently it, it, it uh, apparently I may have just glossed I may have glossed over some information from, from Franca Jansen from Franca Jansen when she was at the panel, and she may have pulled like a Tom Holland and just start blurring spoilers left and right. Oh no! Without me, without me know, without me knowing. Yeah. So uh, the we, if Ramses wants to talk about spoilers, we will let you know when those are going to be, and we'll try to do it towards the end. But I don't know if you if you want to go into that. But just as uh, just to let people know, we're going to try and keep everything for the most part spoiler free because of the way that the movies is coming out in different territories, like Japan and Mexico, getting it early. And then the United States, which is where a large chunk of our audience is at, is going to have to wait until May. So a few, like I think it's the a worst part. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, um, I think in like, um, in like the UK, I think they're going to get it like in like August. So that's even worse for the, for those who live in Europe and English in the speaking countries. So it's like, and yeah, well, no, uh, and I, UK, the UK is getting it on July twenty eighth. Okay, never mind. That's that's still a long wait. Oh, just quick disclaimer: Not just Mexico is getting it on the twenty seventh. Like several Latin American countries are getting it on that uh, on this twenty seventh, oh, okay. as, as well as in Japan, uh, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Mexico, Panama, Peru, Uruguay are the ones confirmed so far. Okay, I apologize. I didn't realize that. That too on premiere day. So I I apologize for that. But um, we we've been kind of discussing how we want to handle this. Obviously, you know, we're not going to tell Ben Haas he can't go watch the movie, but we're going to be very careful about what information we talk about before it's had a mostly worldwide release. Yeah. Um, we're still kind of working with the timing of um, what episode we want to do that and what time we want to do that. But we want to make sure that most people, at least in our listening group would have the opportunity to see the film if they want to, before we start going into spoiler territory, just out of respect, because this is not something that we may ever see again. Like yeah. this, this could be the only time we ever get a Saint Sam movie. So we don't want we don't want to ruin people's experiences for that. So just keep that in mind. We're gonna dance around some topics. Um Ben ha or not Ben Haas, sorry, Ramsey's definitely um as he alluded to, learned a lot. <laughs> at so much. Um, I'm about to say, I, 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 I learned a lot. 
but the thing was the, the actor said a lot as well so it's like it, don't blame me blame blame the, blame the panelists because there was no filter to like someone that's like yeah unfortunately but um my only hope is that they don't just tack them into like a post credit scene or like a final scene of the movie I hope that if they are genuinely going to include the other bronze saints besides uh, Phoenix and Pegasus, that they put an earnest effort into, even if they're just like background characters, making them known that they're there and that they're going to be important in a sequel, potentially, if, if one happens, you know? Yeah. Um, because obviously... There's, one that, we know, there's one that we know so far. And like I said, I'm going to keep quiet on that one. But I'm pretty sure a lot of people can just see my Twitter and you'll know who I'm talking about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> but uh, I will those... say, I will say that I was happy at the name they chose to use, and that's the most. And not, not just that, not, not, not just that, but I'm also happy the fact that they that they went with, with they, just, they made, just, 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 that, the way just, he said it. Okay, that's it. The I'm way just, he said I'm, it. All I'm gonna say is that it's, happy. it's a character that in the Netflix adaption has a different name. That's 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 that that's it. That's it. That's that's as far as you're gonna yeah. get right there. That it, but I mean, all of the core characters have a different name in the Netflix yes. adaptation, so that's that's not revealing too much. But I'm just thankful that they of of the name that they chose, the, at least the name that the person chose to shout out. Yes, which could be you never know. At this yeah. point, we we've not visually seen anybody other than Nero slash Iki and Seiya and some of the silvers and golds. Like we, well, you may have also you may have also seen other, other couple other characters, like a couple of minor characters as well, like. When I, when I get to like when I get to the um, like when I get to the when I when I get to the stunt stuff, there's actually an actor that was there that's actually gonna, that not play a huge role, but he had he, like that they, he's huge enough to have get to get a name. In. Well, why don't you talk about um, Friday's panel? Like, why don't we move on to that because we've been, we've talked a lot about the trailer and it really does bleed into a lot of the information from WonderCon. So why don't we kind of fold that into what we're talking about now, just to keep it moving? Ah, sounds pretty good. Okay, so. The panel was held on Friday. It was a talking. There was a lot of people at the panel, and that's it. <laughs> I kid, I kid, I kid. Okay. <laughs> and moving on. Okay, so I, my name is, I'm your host, Common Art of Furry. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah. We da, did da, not da, make it with you. We technically talked about it. <laughs> ba, 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 da, ba, ba, bye bye. <laughs> oh, let, let me let me up because I, I because I went through it. I did two threads. I did one thread where I just went through it. You, I, 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 you did not do a thread, sir. Do not say you did a threat. You were just posted wildly out in the cyberspace. It was not a thread. But people saw it. People read it. And people I will would respect teach you how to do a thread, okay? <laughs> but dude, but look, I I there were look, they, they did this in 35 minutes. There was supposed to be an hour panel, but they didn't 35 minutes. They were going like they're going at, at a rapid clip. Give me a break. <laughs> it doesn't take much to reply to your own tweet, though. <laughs> I don't care. When when you have we have fat fingers like mine, and you have to keep up on what they're trying to say. <laughs> For God's sakes, don't give me shit. I will, hey, it's my job to give you shit. What else I know, you but like, like, give me, like, give me some for at least this. For God's sakes, at least I came. I, I look, look. Okay. In all seriousness, have you, have you ever seen? Have you ever seen that meme that's like, I don't care if something good happened to you. It should have happened to me. Like that was me all weekend. <laughs> like I don't care that Red's having a good time. It should have happened to me. I should have been the one at Con. <laughs> all no, right. I'm just. So, I'm just kidding. I know. I know. I know. But yeah, there was a panel. There was a panel at WonderCon. Like, it's, like I said, uh, thank you so much for everybody you're holding. I'm gonna like give so many shouts at the end of this um, episode. But, like, it's all it's all you guys that, that made it possible. So, uh, we, we we got in. The panel started, and the panel started with a video from Tomas Wazinski, the director, which we we discussed earlier. He was interviewed for how about the model that you know he expressed that he's you know he was busy doing other things and that you know he couldn't make it. He couldn't make it to the panel, and then he he sent his he sent his gratitude to the fans and sent his, sent all like the he said his gratitude and he'll please watch a movie on 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 May on May on May um uh, in May and you know all that good stuff and the, the, the video ended and then um with, with uh, I, I know we discussed it before but like the, so soon after um the panel the panel the person who was running the panel was Dan Larson from Toy Galaxy slash Secret Galaxy he introduced the staff he introduced the team of the, uh, the he introduced all the team of the uh, the, the, uh, the at, at Comic Con um of course there was Mark Costas Frank Janssen, Nick Stahl uh, uh, Madison Eisman and Diego Dinoco. But a person, a person that I was not expecting to be there was Yoshi Isawa, the producer of the movie. So if there's so if there's like a solid number two person that that would that would know what to, what to do, and person that's like closest to God, like your Metatron, if you will, to Masami Kuramata, it would have been him. So I was surprised that they that they that they um that they that they that he was on hand to like um to to on, on hand on the proceedings. Um, after that, they played another video because um Makeni, you couldn't make it. 
I'm pretty sure. I, I think um, he's right now making a series on Disney Plus right now in um, South Africa. Is so it One Piece show? No, One Piece is already done. Oh, okay. It's a different show for Disney Plus that they have. Like I, I was asking, like I was asking around, and that they, they don't know what. Then some of the the, the the mega fan, the mega McKenyu fans I talked to, they don't know the series. Either. The only thing they know is that it's a Disney Plus show, and it's like that. That's good enough. Like they like because I'm pretty because like you don't know. We don't know what series, and I'm pretty sure it's like he's on an NDA. If he if he's attached to it, he must be under heavy NDAs not to say what it is. But regardless, we know it's a Disney Plus show, and he's filming. He's filming as we speak, so he can not make it. But he put up, a, but he did send a video to the, to the crowd and uh, saying same thing as the Brzezinski video where it's like he's out there. He says like, I can't make it. I'm doing this, and this. You know, go watch the movie on, on May 12th. You know, I'm really grateful for what I did, and you know, and video ends. I mean, it's it's a Disney Plus show, so it's there's a 99 percent chance that it's either Star Wars or Marvel. So, or like there, or, or like or, or, or like or, or like high school or like High School Musical four or something like High School Musical like the the senior years like the super senior years or something. Like that. I don't know. They got, held back. they got held back a, year, a couple of years so after that the first question that was asked is why do saints say a now why they, they, they asked um they, they asked uh, yoshizawa that question and his answer was that the story lended, lended, lended itself very well and it had like a lot of heart to the story and after much discussion after seeing how like the success of the superhero movies have been doing as of late they decided to pull the trigger on doing it which kind of makes sense it's like you know i'm pretty sure if they wouldn't be the movie like say Around the time when they did X Men, like in the two thousands, I don't think the movie would. I don't think the movie would have been um, as successful. Because, like, uh, one of the things that I, one of the things I, I stopped and thought about, what I thought about was like, they did this movie. If they did the live action movie, say, like, in like the late nineties or the two thousands, it would have been just this. It would have been a disaster. It would have been like that. Like the comparisons would have been more apt of Dragon Ball Evolution. Then it would then uh, if it would have made it would have been made then than it is now because like it, like at those cases like like there was no creative freedom with a lot of things and they tried to like force a lot of things like they would they would try to force a lot of like uh, angleization a lot angleization to the characters and it would have it would have been to the to the detriment of the of the series so for them to essentially take notice that like how things are going in, around the world with like how superhero movies are doing and like you know them striking while the iron's trying trying to do something different using that kind of format. But still use like it's still kind of a superhero movie at the end of the day, but then you know utilizing the, those that kind of mistakes and tell a story that's more anime based. I think was I think one of the better ideas. That, one of the best ideas. Next, the next thing they were asked is um, they they go to ask Franca Johnson like what her what her role is in the movie, and she says that you know she she's essentially you know she's essentially evil because she wants to out to protect the world and Athena from herself because like she realizes that she's Athena, and she realizes that um, that her potential. Of what she can do and i'm not going to discuss the next point because it might be an actual spoiler so i my mouth is shut on the next point but you can read the you can read my thread if you're wondering like what that next thing what the next thing about that i've been very quiet about and then they moved to mark the costas who plays on my lock and i used and this is proof of how old i am when i when i was writing this i said yeah he like well, the way he was the way he was talking about himself he kind of he kind of, he kind of described himself as race bannon from johnny quest i'm like i didn't even know johnny quest <laughs> it's like for seriously so, but I like love, I love Johnny Quest, uh, not gonna lie. <laughs> but, um, but the thing was, the, the general idea is that he's more of a um, he's more of a bodyguard in a sense that he's just this badass bodyguard than he is a butler in the original series. In the, in the original series, he's just like this gopher butler that's like, okay, fine, like, like I'll do whatever. He'll do some, he'll do some things, and then he did a little bit more things in the CGI cartoon. But like, for example, in the in the actual cartoon itself, like we, we know that he like he at least pre- practiced kendo enough to at least fend for himself to put, fight against a couple of like low level like grunts, you know. Mm-hmm. And like then like it's, so it's like you know it's so it's not out of the realm of possibility for him to be like to, to take on to take on a couple of like low level like I, I think to try to sub some of the black knights by level and like you know, like these lower level black knights I think it's more reasonable that he can take these guys out. So. I said he's more of a, he's, he has a little bit more of an active bodyguard role into the movie. And you know, that plays a lot with um that that, that plays a lot into his character. Uh, let's see, what else? Because like I am going back and forth here, so because like I'm looking to my it's like but I didn't take notes because I was so busy with taking uh, trying to trying to catch up with the panel. Um <laughs> I think with I think the next thing they talked about was with um okay. So Madison Eisman, they, the next thing they, they went to Madison Eisman, she says, how does the character growth of, of, of Cena throughout the movie, how, like, how, what's the progression of it? She says, it's a tale of self-discovery and how she like, eventually will become Athena and how she's, and how she's choosing to, to use her abilities. 
we then get to Nick Stahl, who plays Cassius, and he real and he and the question is asked about what his relationship with um, Garad is, and he says that you know it's more like you know like she's Garad, he's Garad's right hand man who organizes the Galaxian War Tournament to fight candidates for his black for his black knight um, for his black knights um, um project. So there's a lot of like so we kind of like realizes that the black knights in this movie are kind of like the are like more like the foot soldiers, like they like kind of like mm-hmm. like more so foot soldiers than they were before. Instead of like like we knew what we knew they were gonna do this in a CGI show, but now they were seeing like like the, how they're gonna be doing it here. I think like go, they're really going all out of them being just like the grunt. Of them. He's gonna be like the main grunt. And let's see. After that, it's to um they, they talk to to Diego Nilo. Yeah. What one? I was just gonna say, can I say they picked a really good actor for Cassius? Like yes, I he I will he, tell you this. Right? It, I, I was just gonna say like because Cassius is kind of like I I know that I have a. a history of loving large men but cassie is kind of like cartoonishly large like there are some men that have somewhat of that body type and i'm not body shaming anybody obviously like i'm a big fan um but they they pulled it into the world of realism he's still a large guy like a very like a muscular bigger guy and obviously built more for strength than speed which is the whole dynamic between him and Seiya. is mm-hmm. he's he's more power and say is more speed and and all of that kind of stuff. So I, I just feel like they, again, there's so many things about this movie that while they are like quote Americanizing things, like to an extent you have to, if you're going to do an um, American English Hollywood movie, you've got to, you've got to rein some of the, the stuff and, and change a little bit of stuff culturally. Um, not that's that came across bad change stuff to where it makes sense for the average american viewer i guess is what i meant to say there or the average viewer in general who has no idea what cinta is but but they've kept these core elements and and one of the core elements in the early series is the the ex the the extreme difference between saya and cassius uh is that they're they're two ends of the spectrum and you know Seiya's quickness combined with you know his quick jabs and things like that, and his more—I don't want to say intelligence because he does he's have stupid. his stupid moments, but he like fight-wise, he's a pretty smart guy, and and though that's the two differences, and you can see it even just in the trailer that that they've retained that. So I again just to reiterate uh, for the millionth time, the people behind this movie care. The what what Ben Huss was talking about earlier, the the comparisons to Dragon Ball Evolution are so unjust because there was it just I'm not saying there wasn't a person on that film crew or that that writing staff that didn't care about Akira Toriyama and his work. No, this if, if what what was what care there was did not come through in the film. We've only gotten a two minute trailer and we can see the intense passion behind these people. So I. It's keeping me excited, and I just I wanted to interject that while we were talking about Cassius. But go on with I, I didn't mean to interrupt too much there. No, and that, and that was and that and that was and that was the, that was the thing with with Cassius is that he's kind of like the like the leader of the of the Black Saints. And what I like is that like okay, so like like this is something we were discussing before as like like you know you were saying before like why don't you have the, why don't you have these characters why don't you have that character? Well, if you have this character, you're, you're you're forced to kind of explain yourself. You kind of force yourself into a corner to explain a lot more things. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people who like and I now also, and one other thing that we got that we got to see the the news on was like the running time of an hour and fifty nine minutes, which is a two hour movie. So if you oh, have wow. two hours, a two hour movie to you have a two hour movie to show to tell the story, some things need to be taken out. And unfortunately, like yeah, unfortunately we can't we we like something has to be changed. Something has to be perhaps something has to be different. And just this is actually, I think, a better idea for them to do Cassios in this way. I would, if, they, if I had the choice, I would have actually made them. Actually, would have made him China, but that's just me. True. But uh, I, but I do respect that. I don't. Do we know if we're getting China? No, we don't know just yet. Okay, I was about to say. I figured they would have hyped up um, having another like badass female in the movie if she was going to be fairly important. But I just thought I'd ask. All right. So after that, we get to Diego Tinoco, and he says, um, "And the question was, who is Nero, and what is up with his haircut?" Little that was a little question. <laughs> he says that he's a man on a mission. You know, he's out to kill Athena, and that's his only mission in life. We'll get to we'll get to a little bit why, to ask why later. But you know, it was like it says, like you know, when he was when he was when he gone for the role, he fought hard to get like because they were going to give him a buzz cut, and I'm like, he said no. So they went with this kind of like the stylized hairdo where his where the sides of where the sides of his hair kind of look like like phoenix wings. 
like flowing out of flowing from, from going from the side of his from going flowing from the side of his um from the side of his hair. So like a lot, they're interjecting a lot of like the Phoenix aesthetics into them. And like I said, he's just this intense like guy who's out on a mission. And like I said, when we when we find out stuff later, it makes sense that why he is this kind of intense character. So we got to go. We got to go our first. We got to get, let's see our first clip with uh, with um, with with Seiya, with uh, for the movie. So actually, I did get to see actual scenes from the movie. Um, how do you guys feel about? It? Do you guys want me to talk about it, or you guys want me to skip it? Because like I don't know if this has spoilers or I I I, I think. That it's, that's the fine line that we walk with this because they it is information they put out there and really anybody can access this information, but it's a matter of do you want to access the information or do you want to be surprised? I feel like if it's something that we couldn't infer from the trailer, maybe best not said, in my opinion. Okay, well then, I, I'll then you know, I'll leave this one alone. I like I say, it's, it's a really, it's a, it's a, it's, 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 it's just people like, you know, that not only are they going for like not only are they going for like this loud, super duper, like exciting movie where they're, they're punching people all over the place, but they're going for like these really cool subtle character moments and like and, and like that's a really cool subtle character mo- moment with with Sienna and Seiya. And oh, we get is, to talk one. Is that where he asks her what's it what is it like to be a goddess or something like that? Yeah, I was like, what's it what's it what's it like to be a goddess? Like what, what is like what's her fate? And she says, like, maybe you're fate to be, maybe you're fate to be the Pegasus like all this time. Maybe I'm fated to be like maybe because of my upbringing, I w- I was fated to be the goddess Athena, which leads to something, but I won't say much after that. I do also appreciate that. <laughs> Again, love the source material, but I I appreciate that the fact that Sayori was born in Greece. She mm-hmm. actually looks like she could be a Greek woman in this movie, <laughs> potentially. <laughs> and is it Japanese? And I understand that that that's just a thing that anime does. Everybody's Japanese, and no matter what country they're in, everybody speaks Japanese. Everybody is Japanese for the most part in anime. But I, I appreciate that she looks European because okay. she's supposed to be from Sanctuary, which is in Italy. Um, yeah, I digress. Uh, Go on. Greece, Greece, Greece. Sorry, I want to say Italy. I'm um, I just um, but I want, but I want to, I want to ask, so I want, to, I want to pass it out to Ben. Is there anything that you want to want to clarify on my end that, that you want me to answer? Uh, totally. I'm not really. So far, all the information that you've been given is quite um, very revealing. Uh, okay. Revealing, and I think that it illustrates quite a bit, a bit more the intention with this movie. Obviously, there are quite a few things that people have the right to be nervous about. I mean, let's not beat around the bush. We've known for a while, and seeing the trailer confirms that they're. Well, from I think that you're going to tell us a little bit more about this later on, because they have meant, I remember that you posted that they mentioned taking inspiration from all the different uh, source materials for the story, the, the anime, yeah. the, the manga, mm-hmm. but it is more than clear that the plot itself is pretty much based mostly on the CGI show. And I'm, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I don't think that the idea for that plot line on the CGI show was bad, just that the execution was abysmal. I actually have hope that from everything that I've, we've been seeing from the trailers, alongside the information that has been revealed, the execution this time will be fairly good. Okay. Uh, that being said, I'm just I'm I'm just wondering uh, I'm just wondering exactly how well it's going to be fitting because, for example, like if I wanted to go on purist mode, which I won't, don't worry. But like for example, Cassius' role as China's apprentice is so important for a uh, for the fight in the Leo Temple, and obviously we're jumping ahead way too much, and we don't know if that's even going to happen, but assuming that it does, how uh, they would have to rework uh, stuff around that so that it, it continues to work, or at the very least, that it is adapted in a way that can follow the plot line of the original intention without deviating too much from that source material. So I'm just wondering what other stuff that will be in the movie uh, will be like work around or adapted into this particular plot line that they're doing. That Those are the thoughts that I've been having on my head. But I do like the the way that he has been executed so far, and I'm actually very interested in, in hearing more about it. So please go on, Ramses. Yeah. Okay. I, I, so I just wanted to, I, on on what you were saying. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, I that's why I kind of got that's why I asked if we're gonna see Shina, and I feel like if we don't see her, we might have her mentioned because of the plot hole that that would create if they eventually did get to the gold, like the the gold mm-hmm. saints arc. So well, that, again, that's like, why uh, I wanted to know. <laughs> Yeah, again, like, well, like, they're, like, they're kind of, there's a lot of things that are kind of tight lipped, but there's also a lot of things that kind of, like, left in the open. So, again, like, we're kind of threading on, on, like, a thin line as to, like, what's a spoiler and what isn't a spoiler. Like I said, I, like, I can surmise probably a lot of things what is what could potentially be a spoiler, so I can, like, so I'm going to, like, walk around a lot of it. 
But if like, but but like I said, like we wouldn't know until the movie comes out. Like a lot of this, like a lot, a lot of this more, a lot of this information. So, uh, so basically, they go back to to Madison. Madison just talks about like a little bit more about her character and how her past is very important to like herself and the character and how the character's growth comes into the movie happens. The second scene, they, they soon play another scene with like Cassius and Gerard, and pretty much they're they're trying to look for new candidates for the black for the Black Knights. And he says, like, you know, continue doing your work with, with uh, in the in Galaxian War, um, the Galaxian Wars to like find um to find new candidates for the blacks for the Black Knights. Then we cut to Franca Chanson, and like she says, like, you know, she was working back and forth to find not just like the the like the tone of for Gerard, but also like her look as well. So there was a lot of back and forth between her and and the, and the War of the Department trying to like figure out a good look and like trying to find a good feel for the character herself. To like match the match the attitude of the character. Again, and this involves something else that like this may be spoilers, so I'm not gonna say anything else. But yeah. But let's just say something happens and it, it's like a really huge motivation to her character, and that's why we kind of like where we are with, with with Gerard at this point. Um cut to another scene. They cut to another another quick sequence. It's a scene with um Cassius and Nero. And it looks like there's something had happened with like, the botch mission. And pretty much this, like, pretty much it's um Cassius trying to dress him down, which I, I saw a lot of people like wondering on the Spanish feed. They're like wondering what the fuck does um does does dressing down mean? It means that he was he was confronting him about something. He was like that's that's a that's just a very short way of saying he was confronting him about in a very negative light about something that happened. And he says like oh you know don't worry I'll, I'll handle this. And we cut to Diego and Diego pretty much talks about his talks about a little bit more about uh, about Nero and you know he says like he has a mission like he's a man on a mission. He does not want to fail whatsoever on it. Because he feels like he has, if he fails this, he's gonna fail. He, he feels like you know the weight of the world is gonna be on his shoulders, and if he fails it, that that like you know that, that's like he's, he'll have no purpose left. So were they upfront finally about that? Actually, like we we knew that it was Nero, but they're being they're they're finally not just calling him like the the mysterious assassin. assassin. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good because that was that was annoying because we we knew everybody knew. We've known this since the very since the cast was announced. I don't know why it took them. I was I was hoping that there would be like a, a legal reason or like a surprising reason for them to keep it secret. It's like, why did you keep it secret for so long if it was so goddamn obvious? But okay. And not just that, not just that. It's like you, even you, the Inoko, was like rubbing it in. That's like it's yeah, it's him. Like he, we, like Jesus. Even the one actor's like, yeah, I'm I'm playing the mysterious assassin, but you know he may or may not be icky, guys. Check out, this, check, out this, check out this cool Twitter Iki I brought. This has no this has no relation whatsoever to the character that I'm playing in the movie. I play this mysterious assassin whose identity is unknown, who dies many times and comes back to life, always shows up at just the right moment to save everybody, and is kind of a jerk, but we don't know who he is. It could be anybody. <laughs> but yeah, check out this cool toy I brought of the oh, this, check out this cool toy I brought just of Iki. Just this Iki toy I brought, no other character. Everybody has their favorite, like saint. Like, don't, don't, don't be a hater. But, but, but when, 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 it's, when, when he's actually trying to toy and actually like point it out, then yeah, maybe, maybe there's something up with what he's trying to tell us. I mean, if he really wanted to be a troll, he would have brought like Poseidon or something. Like, something <laughs> obviously not going to be a <laughs> just to be like, yeah. So uh, here's, I, I can't say who the mysterious assassin is, but this toy is really cool, and it's just a fucking like Poseidon ex box. <laughs> No, or, or like it has to, no, it has to be someone like just like one of the like, lower lower level silver saints. Like, um, oh, what's the name? What's the name of the guy who throws a disc? Um, the steel saint. Oh, Auriga Capella. <laughs> yeah, just make him. They make him do that. It's like, yeah, check, I'm playing this. Like, I, I totally playing an assassin, but hey, check out this cool toy I brought. Isn't that cool? Uh huh. It's like it's the Hydra or some shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh no, you Francis. kill them. You really kill Francis. them. Okay, so I will be filling in for the rest of the episode for Ramses. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Okay. Let me get my composure here. Okay. So um so yeah, I, I he goes into a little bit more detail, but like we all the, the, the cat's out of the bag. I won't say here on the show, but suffice to say the, the, the info's out there now about something about one of his main motivations. I won't say here on the show, because I'm pretty sure I'm coming for he's gonna fly from wherever he is and punch me. So I'm you have my mouth shut. I but, I want everybody to know that I am trying my like I'm walking the thinnest of lines between being a member of this panel and being informed and also saving as much as I possibly can to be surprised about 
So uh, it's a thin line. It's a very difficult thing to do. And I, I want as much of it to be a surprise as possible. So some of this stuff, I'm just like, Ramsey, no. But I know, but I, again, 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 I'm Ramsey only reporting what they're, I'm, like, I'm just reporting what I've been hearing. I, mean, I don't put much thought into like what, like what is, what, 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 what they're actually saying. And stuff. It's just like, I hear something, I type something with my fat fingers. It might, it might sound like I'm saying something else. Yeah. So, Okay. <laughs> Okay, so after I talk with Diego Tinoco about his character, like a little bit more in depth with, with the, we get to talk, we get to Mylock actually, the Tatsumi, and we get to a scene with him. He's he's confronting the black, he's confronting a couple of black uh, lower level black knights, and they're like, he's like, hey, I gotta go over there, and they're like, no, we can't let you, and they're like, you think like you think we're gonna let, we're gonna let a, 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 a pathetic guy like you get by us? And he starts laughing at him, and he starts to laugh, at, he starts to laugh with them, and he pulls out a gun and starts shooting them, and that's how these that's how the scene ends. Oh. Okay, <laughs> that's violent. <laughs> yeah, he's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. like, yeah, like, holy crap, this guy is. This, this guy is, is secretly a, a Joker tie-in movie. Yeah, just like, just they're laughing it up all together, and it's like just start shooting up these black, these black saints, and like, oh god, this this guy is so violent. But yeah, they they got to talk a little bit about, they got to talk a lot about about like, well, they got to talk some with with Mark Dacascos about that, and like, what, what, one of the things I think that they realize is that you know. They wanted to make the character a little bit more. Like they want because, like, since like there, like there's a lack of characters that could like fill in that role. He had to kind of step up on it, and he like we had a lot of input as to like what what he can do and stuff like that from his role from like doing a lot of like martial arts movies and and TV shows as well. As mm -hmm. Matter of fact, when I when I talked to him like later on, I thanked him for one of the roles, and he was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe you!" He's like, again, like I'm gonna get to like the spoilers for the for the, for the signing. Mark Costas is like top ten people in the universe. You know, if wherever if you, I, I hope you're listening. I, I hope like you know when the, things are said and done, there's a special place where you get everything in the world because like, you deserve it. You, you're such the nicest person in the universe. So he, he's you know he was back and forth with the, with the, with, the, with the team like and I'm pretty sure he, he was back and forth with like the stunt team as well to make sure like what kind of stunts they can do. Like he is he's a martial artist as well. So he mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure he was back and forth with all those with all those teams and working with them very closely. Um, and this and then we got to a really interesting conversation. Next topic was the was the purple hair, and she said that we this is something we already knew already from the San Diego Comic Con panel. When she got the role, she only had three weeks to like get prepared for the role, and when she got the when she got that role in three weeks, she blit like she asked for the entire series and she blitzed the entire thing, and she wow. fought <laughs> she fought very hard to get the purple hair because apparently they, they, they didn't want to do it at first, but she was adamant. She put her foot down. That she needed to do that for the sake of accuracy and the sake for and story reason, she put her foot down to keep that to keep the purple hair. Even if it's just like a little string of you know those like those patches of, of purple, she fought really hard. As a matter of fact, in the trailer we get to see we get like, I don't know if it's a flashback, but we actually get to see her with full purple hair. Mm -hmm. it, I, I was thinking that it was like when because you know before she starts to really get control of her cosmos, she has those moments in, in the um, original where like. Athena, quote unquote, starts to take over, like her her more powerful side. So yeah. I just kind of assumed that that's going to be kind of the visual representation of when she's going into Athena mode, I guess. And it's interesting because, like you know, she he fought she fought hard for it. Diego was like, "I'm not getting my fucking hair. Again. Please, like, give me something else. I don't want to get my hair cut. I'll cut, I'll cut up because I already did it once for another movie. I don't want to do it again." He's like, and they just kind of went through a compromise. But poor Mark the Cosmos had, had to do had to do the had to, had to do the short straw, and he was like. <sighs> Fine, I'll get a buzz cut again. It's not like I did it before for John Wick three. And then um, she then they described what happened with the stunts. And one of the things that they that she describes is that you know um, one of the stunts that she did with uh, Mass as when she describes is a, a very particular scary stunt. But she says that she's really grateful that she got to do this really cool like flip and stuff like that. And yeah, I mean this is like you're, I'll tell you a little bit more later as to like what I thought must have happened. But I'm pretty sure, like, like, they, like, because there's so much wire work in the movie. I'm pretty sure in some scenes they have to like let the actors do a lot of wire work themselves instead of getting the stunt actors. So I'm pretty sure, like, in that in that situation they had her like they had no choice but to put her in for like maybe because like because like, like you know for the shot because they need to get like the shot just right and they couldn't get like the stunt actor to do it. So they had to like get her in on on it. So they so they had to do it like that. So. It's interesting that like some of the actors actually had to do, had to endure a lot of that, a lot of those hardships with this, a lot of those you might get this type of stunt stuff. Um, after that, they they talk to Nick Stahl again. Nick Stahl talks about like he he's like I had a lot of tattoos, but they're very American tattoos, like a lot of very colorful tattoos. 
But he said like they had to apply. He had they had to apply the they had to apply special thing because like they wanted specifically a very Eastern European type tattoos on him. So he, he was describing the, the makeup process, like trying to put all that stuff on him, so, like and then trying to put like the 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 the, the actual tattoo, like a fake tattoo on on him, and how the process how that process was. And like he said, like yeah, well, it's kind of exhausting. And then I think Mark uh, Mark Tukaskis, um interjected. And he's like, yeah, I know that feeling because like, and then he describes. It, when he said this, when he said what he was talking about, I I nearly died laughing because like if you know the story about this movie, it's like the most like it's a like knowing he was in the movie is the most hilarious thing in the world, but it's also the saddest part when you know the story. But he's talking about he was making the Island of Doctor Mon- Monroe in 1996, which uh, is a notorious, a notorious movie filming wise, where no one, where everybody was out, but was like everybody had like an inflated ego. Val Kilmer had an inflated ego. Uh, what's his face? Uh, Mal- Marlon Brando had a, this, this huge inflated ego. There was just so much going on, and, and just hearing like some of the disasters that was happening behind the scenes. And here, when he when he said, "I was like, oh my god, I bet you this dude had like so many stories he's got to tell us that I want to I want to hear." So, and then you know, they, they uh, speaking of Dr. Costas, they go they go back again. And he says like, "Hey, you know, since you're to, to speaking on makeup, you know, how is it like? You know, how is it feeling getting little tattoos and stuff like that?" He's like, and then he describes when he got his he had no choice like his head head shaved, which hey, sometimes that's how, that's how the Hollywood system works, baby. <laughs> and he, then he says like, "Yeah, he wanted to keep one of the tattoos, but he says his wife would have killed him if he would have kept one of the tattoos." And it's a very prominent tattoo he has on his chest, his neck. I don't know if you see the the, the photos on him, but he has like a, a tattoo like a web. Playing across his like the upper part of his neck all the way to, all, all the way down. He wanted to keep that, but he just couldn't. <laughs> but like, yeah, but I, I was like, D-d-d-d-. I don't care. But the man, the man, the, the man's a saint. The man's a saint. So after that, they they cut the Franca Chanson and they told her like, you know, how was the filming? I, I forgot how they described it, but it, in essence, it's what they call the volume. The volume is a chamber they put people in, and this is something that this is something this is kind of they've been doing this for a while, but like this has been used more and more now post pan in this pandemic you know era where we're at. To keep as many as little people in the in the studio as much as possible, and what they do is like it's a chamber where it where stuff is being projected, and you're and it's mostly projected, and you and they pretty much like it looks like a, it looks like an actual like you know set. It's a it's a digital set that they're projecting out, and you know, and she said like she was very dis, she was feeling just very disoriented from it because because like it was moving so fast a lot of things, and it was like moving like it, while you while they were stationary. It, so I'm pretty sure it was, like, her it was the combination of. The the it the scene moving in the background while still being still and also doing a lot of the wire work must have like confused her. And with that, I think um like she, she was describing what was what, like she was feeling disoriented, that she was not feeling comfortable, like it was like making her sick at times. And then out comes in Mark Picasso is like, oh yeah, and that and that's why I took some medication before I, I, I started doing my scenes. Like, hey oh I can I can only imagine what it must be like uh like actually having to work in that um I wanna call it a place. Would that be appropriate? Um, um well, place set. Of, yeah, set. That, yeah, that type, of, that type of set. Like it sounds like if you have any type of uh, dizziness or any of those ailments where it's difficult, like to to keep uh, to keep composure. I can only imagine the difficulty of of having to pull off that work must be like, or the type of strain it, it could induce on on the body. Yeah. So, um, so, so okay, so. So basically, so, so after that, the, the, so after that, they talk. Well, we get to see Luthi Pinoco, and he talks a little bit about like why he took on the role. And this is one of my favorite parts of the panel because he talks about like he called up all of his family, he talked to his little nephews and nieces, and they told him like, "Oh, I'm gonna be doing this movie based on Saint Seiya." And he says, "And it says I've been thinking about taking the role of Iki," and they're like, and they encourage him so much because he has family from South America and, and from uh, from Mexico that they were encouraging him to do it. It was. It was one of the beautiful moments because he said like you know it, like he, like they felt like it was very important. Like they told him, he jokingly said that. If he didn't take the role, they, they would like disown him, and he would not. He, he wouldn't be invited to any gatherings. So, so, uh, so, but like he, he didn't want the emphasis like you know this is important for me, especially for for the for um for, for Latinos to have like some sort of representation, and like you know what better representation to have like this badass character. So, and then after that, um, we, the last question that they asked was why they went with Knights of the Zodiac as the name of the, of the movie, and they said because it was something that Kuromata like it was something that that felt a little bit more closer to the. To the to the journey of Seiya becoming like a regular saint to becoming like a gold saint in, in his own in, you know his own terms, so they went with that name for like the international release. It was also something too that was mirrored by Kuromada when he first started hearing the name of of Los Caballeros Zodiacos, like to the Zodiac. He liked that name a lot more, 
in those in those parts of the world as well. So there's that. And then they played the trailer, and that's the end. That's the end of the that's the end of the panel. So is there any questions you guys have that you guys want to ask me on the panel? I, I'm, I'm trying to stay away from the knowledge. The knowledge is scary. It, it's just a matter of that. It's so much information that I like. I can only imagine what being there must have been like. Actually, getting and, the information from the people involved, it must have been quite the experience. I don't really think that I have any particular questions regarding all the info that you've been putting out, especially because maybe some of the things that I would like to go into more detail are spoiler-like. It's just that I, what I'll say is this, uh, I, because I didn't get to mention this before. Well, I made a comment about I'm happy that they are finally pushing marketing on this movie, and seeing the the pictures of the outside of the venue covered in Saint Seiya, mm -hmm. it was it was kind of like like a fr a, a relief. Uh, uh, yeah, that sense of relief that you get when it's like, oh, finally, like, finally, there's you're starting to see effort and, and money being put into the marketing, which has been, I think, one of the main uh, criticisms about the, the whole production so far, that it's it, we're very close to it getting released, and only now are we starting to see the... the, the the marketing materials, but well, it's it's better late than never, in my opinion. So I'm just happy that they're finally doing it in such a good manner. Okay, so one last thing, I will tell you this before we come to our next. Panel. I overheard somebody talking at the end of the panel outside, like as I was saying, like it was a kid and his, his parents. Like, I want to see that. I want to see that Zodiac movie. He said that Zodiac movie is not coming out to like not coming out to. Like, hearing that from a little kid was just. Just like it, it made me really happy when I heard that. I was like, it so means make toys, damn it. Make some toys for this damn movie. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, um, so I'm gonna go. So, next palette. So, like, I so I'm not gonna go too much into detail about like what, what, what exactly, but I'll tell you this much right now. Um, for me, the, the reason why I the, 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 the panel is so fun loaded, as you can tell, that's why there was so many misspellings, so many things, because they brought they did so much in 35 minutes. It wasn't a, it wasn't an hour panel. It was that was just 35 minutes of everything that I just said. So imagine wow. me, I have not, I didn't eat anything for like for like for like for like 18 hours. I hadn't slept because I was so excited and so anxious. And I was trying my best to keep this all. Up. My mind was fried. Totally fried, but I'm really happy, and like I'll get to something later about what, why I'm really happy about this. So let's talk about the second panel. The second panel was the Saint Seiya 101, and basically a stunt, a stunt team breakdown as what like the stunts of the movie. This was a little bit more simpler. There's not really much really to discuss. Uh, basically, if you ever seen if you ever seen the, uh, the video of, of um, Dan Larson of his Saint uh, history of Saint Seiya, he goes into a lot of details about it. But he says like it, it since it's just like a ten, it since it's just a thirty since it's just a, an hour panel he can only go through so much. But he did but he did mention but one of the things that that struck me and one of the things that like I would have thought this would have been the first thing I would have like eliminated if I was working with Toy. He talks about the failure of like the two thousand three like Deke dub and stuff like that. So it's like it's amazing that gave him this much leeway to talk about that. Yeah, actually, yeah, but I'm genuinely surprised that they allowed him to talk about that. Like, I was surprised that there was not. I was surprised, like what the mini was talking about Deke, and they were talking about Block of Seagulls. That like, and like there would there'd be like a like a little red dot coming right from the back, like <laughs> well, like three dots, and then like you're like. To be fair, it I it probably was to get ahead of a media storm because that's gonna eventually be like a BuzzFeed article that's like that crappy anime you remember from two thousand three on Toonami is getting a Hollywood movie. <laughs> yeah, you you know that that's going to be a BuzzFeed article. Like mm -hmm. that's the kind of bullcrap that they do. So it, it was probably just trying to get ahead of the curve and just being like, we acknowledge that that was the worst attempt, and we're going to make sure that it stays the worst attempt by making this movie not the worst. You know, yes. so I think but, it was yeah. needed to talk about it. And also another line that 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 also like got, that also tickled me pink was like the fact where they talk about like the the name the use of the name Pope. It's like he says. It's like it's equivalent of a, of a line of a line cook at, 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 at a restaurant. It's just it's just a title you get. It's not like something you're officially a pope, which is not an apt to display, the way to describe it. Actually, <laughs> he showed so, up. Uh, 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 Jim and I Saga showed up for the job interview, killed the manager, and just pretended to be him for several years. It's <laughs> what we all have done. We've he all done Shion. it. He killed Shion. He killed Shion. He just took. He killed Shion. Took his hat as his their manager, and now he's the manager now. <laughs> if, if, I've learned, if I've learned anything from from all, not just one, but all of Brandon Rogers' cinematic universe videos, it's that you just murder people and it's fine. 
<laughs> do I just shout out real quick? Brandon Rogers Bryce episode two is out. It's my favorite thing in the universe. Go watch it. Anyway, continue. Yeah, send me a link to that. I'm gonna check that out. Anyways, um, so yeah, so so after that, after that, after after that discussion, he he brings in the stunt crew and Andy Chen comes in and he talks about like you know how do you, how do you assemble a team from the movie? And we like he got like he got kind of like three generations of people to work with him. He got one generation of people that have been working for years. Another set of people he found to work for him for Chang Chi, and another and, uh, and like and most of the crew he's working with right now are people that are completely new that he found via like YouTube and like TikTok and Instagram and stuff like that. So any aspiring martial artist that wants to be in a movie, you know, keep that keep doing that stuff on like YouTube and keep doing that stuff on mm -hmm. TikTok. Like you get you're gonna get noticed. You're gonna be in a big movie like this. Yeah, I I think that we're in the age where. Because it was really iffy with YouTube for a long time whether YouTube people could successfully cross over, and I think now we've seen enough of them do so. And TikTok is the next big thing, you know. Instagram kind of was for a little bit, and now TikTok is. Um, like the there's people on RuPaul's Drag Race that were just primarily only known for being on TikTok, mm -hmm. and they're able to be on the show. No performance experience, even though that's kind of a big thing with being a drag. Yeah, so like um. <laughs> I think, I think you need to like I, I, if I know correctly because I don't watch like I watch it but I'm not like I'm not obsessed with it. It's like I think some of the things is like you need to like know how to lip sync and you need to know how to perform. So it's like that's kind of a huge thing. Yeah, but but it's still it was still like there's been social media queens on the show before, but they um it's no spoiler now because it's the season's about to end. We're like two episodes from the finale at this point. But they had Sugar and Spice who are really famous TikTok drag queens and they're twins. Mm -hmm. And um, they're all about like 2000s brats doll aesthetic and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. they were just wildly popular. Like if you are talented, you can get recognized now. So that is a that is a fantastic takeaway. And I'm I'm really glad that they looked into that as a potential pool of people to work with. Like that's mm -hmm. freaking amazing. Because again, it goes back to what we've been saying. Well, specifically me, because I repeat myself a million times. Is that the people in this movie that are making this movie care about this movie? And they care about also, and not if they don't care about the movie, they care about like making sure it's like the best looking movie they can. Yeah, they, they care about the franchise, like the and even the actors that weren't familiar with it made themselves familiar with it for the most, like for the most part of at least the ones that you've been talking about for the panels have like took the time to get to know it if they didn't already know it, and it's it's just I I can't. I can't gush on that enough. That like, even if this ends up not being the most phenomenal movie, it's gonna have the heart of Saint Seiya in it, and that's yes. what matters. Exactly. And that's one of the things. Like one. I'm sorry, I was just gonna mention. But I didn't really comment on this before, but I I, I should have. Uh, I just the, what, talking about this, like just hearing how hard uh, Madison fought to try and be as accurate as possible to the iconic visual of of sayori because they could have easily just either go with the with go with her natural blonde hair or they could have if, you, they could have also gone with the more let's put it realistic uh, manga color of sayori's hair which is a uh, brunette oh, yeah i mean that, that could have worked as well but the fact that she fought to keep that iconic anime uh, visual of sayori it's something that just just that should tell you the fact that and the fact that she also fought not fought sorry that she yeah, read the, she was immersed in the material to know the character that should tell you everything about this and again pointing out what you've guys been saying it doesn't matter what the end result might end up being it, 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 there will be people that will not like the final product I'm, I'm sure of that but this definitely this production definitely has people that care about the source material and that care about the product itself and that it that shows with everything that we've been going through and i think that the, the panels have been have been amazing at showing even more of that from what we've already seen prior to that and mm -hmm. i think that that that's another testament to this is not dragon ball evolution because dragon ball evolution did that exactly bulma has blue hair like well, like grayish blue hair depending on which era you're talking about but she has that iconic you know weird color anime hair and in the show they gave her a streak of blue and called it a day yeah and the, to know that they that they're not gonna just skimp out and do like a hint of the anime they're gonna go full anime um it's kind of endearing a little bit yeah 
Uh, so continuing on with the panel, one of the things I really do appreciate about Andy Chen is like he spent like a good five minutes talking about all the people that didn't make it to the panel, and it would there was, he went through this entire list of people, and it's just and just hearing him give the props like it, like up and down to especially the people that are not there. That's a huge uh, like testament of like this guy really loved what he did, and he really put a lot of effort into it, especially to the point where it's like look, you everyone everybody is gonna get their piece of it, and I'm gonna make sure that even if you're not here, you're gonna, you're gonna still be part of it. By mm-hmm. the way, Ramses, may I ask a question? I forgot to ask this from the first panel. Uh, because I remember seeing a, a pic, uh, like Ma- Mao from uh, from CDCMX. Uh, shout out to Mao, by the way. Who was also posting information. He posted a picture of the pe- of the of the room, and at first it looked kind of, looked kind of empty. But then he posted another picture of people like starting to fill up. How big or or how full was the room? Okay, just to give you an idea. People were asking this question, and the room was at the when I went in, it was actually kind of it was actually kind of barren. As a matter of fact, if you if you were to just walk in there, like if you walked in there about an hour, like with that with like a, with like an hour or so to get in, you you can easily get a seat up front, easily, easily. That 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 was that would have been really that that that, that that's that's really um that 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 that's, that's that was what was evident. But I will say this: um, as time went on, the place got filled, and like the, the question was like I got a question on Twitter was like how much people can, how many people can fit in like two hundred like no you can fit like 400, 600. I think they the room was filled the, the room was full to capacity if not more so that's so it, so it was I'm... it was filled and I was really happy that it was filled because like another thing also thing to note too is that with the, how this panel like this was the first panel in of the day at that room so it was virtually empty. So there was no one else from another panel. Usually, you can stay there for like you can usually stick on there for like the just you can stick around for the rest of the time there if you're if you're like you know if you want to just so you can like be just be in the room and just do reporting and stuff like that. But we that was the we, what the Saint Seiya panel was the very first panel and that got filled to the brim. I'm got, very happy to hear that. I'm actually very happy to hear that because was, one of my one of my fears was like like okay, fair enough, they're doing the panel and stuff, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee people will go into the panel, especially right. for a franchise that does not have the levels of popularity that not, that others do and that would probably fail it. So I was kind of like, oh, I wonder how this is gonna go. So it makes me really happy to hear that it was so, I mean, either and, full or almost full. So and the thing is, you gotta realize one thing when it comes to these panels. Like a lot of people, there's a lot of people there for other panels. They're like, okay, I'm gonna sit here and wait for this other panel to start. Or they're like, or they're hardcore fans, or like something like they don't even know. Like they just saw like the thing. They just they might have saw the presentation. They might have saw like the the, the programming guy and they just went in and like. I don't know what a, I don't know what a night of the zodiac is, but I want to see it. Or people that were outside that saw the thing that they put yeah, that's to. What I was about to say. And the even bags, they, or they saw the bags they were giving out for the when the 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 the, 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 the like these cheap like plastic bags they were giving out. They had they had, they had nights of the zodiac on there too. So like they they were they were really pushing Saint Seiya, and I'm pretty sure like they, they was already implanted in a lot of people's brains. Like, oh, there's a Saint Seiya movie. There's gonna be a panel here. Why don't, why don't I go check this out? So I, I'm glad that that. I'm glad that they put effort into it, that it wasn't because there's been quite a few Hollywood makes an anime movie and then they do, you know, they'll do a little bit of the convention circuit. And in the traditional sense of like the Hollywood machine, anime conventions, not really. Well, I I guess WonderCon isn't just anime convention, but, but like convention circuits are not exactly like their bread and butter for promotions. But the fact that they're, Again, it goes back to the people being passionate behind it. They know that we, the fans, the people that have been clinging to this franchise forever, wanted to see it. And this is where the fans go. They go to conventions. So it was just, I just think it was a smart move all around. Like the, the people behind this know what they're doing. The success or failure is just going to come down to the recognition, you know, in the specific markets that they put it in. So I'm going to skip a little bit for I'm going to skip a little bit onto a lot of these and just talk about like some of the major things they talked about here. One of the, one of the guys I want to talk about here is David Toak. He is a stunt actor. He's on Twitter. He's very he's extremely active with with when it comes to Saint Seiya. So like yeah, yeah. I I want to give a shout out to Mr. Torok because he, the, he you can see just how enthusiastic he is about the whole project. He's probably I don't follow all of the crew on Twitter, but I do follow him. And and before I follow him, I just the, the amount of uh, retweets and of him sharing the information and just like sharing the the first teasers and then the trailer and everything. You can see that he really enjoyed being a part of this project and he continues to like push it forward. So I'm I'm very happy for that. And, I told one. No, no, I was just gonna say I'm happy for that, and and the uh, like, thank you to Mr. Torok. That's all I want to mm-hmm. say. 
Oh, and I, trust me, I told him like, you know, you're you're like, you know, I'm grateful you're part of the Saint Seiya family. That like, thank you so much for putting this much effort and this much time to like to repost things. You're like one of like the true stars of the. Uh, you're like one of the true like heroes of this of of this movie, trying to get us all hyped up for it. And talking to you and learning a little bit more about you has made has made it really has made it really you know made it really special. And he says like, okay, so first things first, he plays a character named Jackie, and I did some research <laughs> on Jackie. Um, you remember that guy that oh. that uh, that that Marin fought when she was trying to get to when she was trying to get to the Leo house to save Seiya? Remember one of the worst fillers Toei ever did for the <laughs> original series? There you go. That's the character he's playing. Uh, I actually I, I have so many fixed mixed feelings on that because on the one hand it's like really out of all the characters you could have included into the movie you had to get that character from that very embarrassing and horrific filler that toy did but on the other hand then i look at it at the positive side is that hey now jackie can be an actual character that i may end up uh, remembering fondly thanks to him so yeah. that's that's inter an interesting well, not, feeling to have not only that but like they they probably needed another silver saint and beyond shina like yeah they're all pretty forgettable unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're all pretty mad, so they could have literally picked any of them. And, it and also, give, I also give props to this. I want to give props to this dude because this guy got kicked square in the face three times Ooh. during, like, during while well, doing stunts. And the worst, and that's not even the worst thing he got. Well, he was trying to while well, he's doing a slide, he got he got an ear infection because I think like it went down and I think like it, it got like some of the got to his ear and yep, there's your ear yeah. infection. So he's giving it all and he's still posting things for Saint Seiya. So you know what? Props to you if you're listening. I'm a cool guy. Okay, so uh, so I'm gonna skip a little because it was just pretty much just an introduction to a lot of things. So they they describe um after that they describe um the like the black the process of being the black knights and they said like it's all practical they all have to wear that big bulky suit and they couldn't see shit out of that suit and it was really hard for them to maneuver but they did their best to maneuver it in the suit and to do all the flips and stuff like that. They mentioned the fact that like they, they had to time everything exactly so they can get so they know because they know they can't see anything to like to know their cues. Mm -hmm. Um, they said it was one of the hardest stunts to do in the movie, and it, and this and it's just a, this is what I was alluding to. Like, it's a stunt involving Marin where she had to drop, where she had to like, like jump off a pillar. They said they had to do it twenty seven times, and at one point the rig got just got broken, like the the ring where they, like the, the thing where like they where they pulled like the pulleys and stuff like that completely broke. I don't think they didn't have anything happened to the camera, but the rig that they used like to, to do that capture completely broke. And like oh oh that sucks so much. And they said like they took twenty seven takes, and it took them. Like from like morning to like mid afternoon to like mid afternoon, like almost the evening. Um, then they describe wow. uh, uh, like that. That just sounds like a nightmare to shoot. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm, that's why I'm thinking to a lot of what like must have happened with like with like with, with uh, Madison Eisman and with um with Funko Jansen. They they pretty much just like look, we got no choice. We have to put you in this shot. We have to put you in this rig. I don't. I I'm I'm we're, we're very sorry. We'll give you a little bit extra, but I'm sorry. You gotta put this in. So add to like the problem during the volume. They had to do all that. So like, oh, it's gotta be a nightmare. So they talked about like the visualization, what they used to visualize with with with, with the stunt work. They said there was a lot of communication between the stunt team and the director, and also with uh, with Andy Chen to all of them. And they said they used a lot of action figures to describe their um their um their, their like what they want to do, what they want to do. To which Dan Larson was like, yeah, that's something I'm really familiar with because I know a lot about action figures. He runs um YouTube channel. <laughs> um, uh, here's a, here's one of my favorite things they showed off. They showed off like how do you like how did you how did you interpret the Ryu, the Pegasus Ryu Seiken in, in a movie form? And he said one of the things that was interesting is that Andy Chen wanted to make an iconic like hand gesture for for Seiya so so someone could easily recognize it. Something he said something to the extent of like you know when Superman, when Spider Man he does like the things where he puts like the the index and the the ring finger together to like use his web. Mm -hmm. He wanted he wanted some, uh, something similar to that for Seiya. And with, and one of the stunt actors, Brandon Lee, he shot out the Ray Saken, and what he does is basically he looks like he, he it looks like he's pulling his arm, he looks like he's pulling his arm back, and he puts like two of his hands forward to and his his neck and the, his arm sort of sticking out, so it looks like it's a horse, and he, and he does the punch, and it's really cool. Like, like there's a video by Mao who shows it off a little bit more more this week, and he shows him like, okay, this is like this, this is the heart, this is the head of the Pegasus, this is the head, this is like the back, this is the neck. And like you know, he tells him like this is the motion, and it looks like the wings are flying into the motion. So there's a lot involved with it, so it looks like so like there's a lot involved with it, so it looks iconic. So they really are going to like those little details about about that kind of stuff. And they said everybody that all the saints in the movie will have this unique, um, so have their new unique signature move. Like he, he looks like he was about to do Phoenix's thing, but it looks like he was like, oh, oh I better stop it because like it's, that's 
that's throwing up way too much. So yeah, and that's how the and that's how the panel ended. Like I know, I I know that was not as brief as um I know I know that it was not as intense, but it was a lot. It was a lot of great talk, a lot of great like behind the scenes stuff, and that's a panel that you can like. I think Mao has already put up entirely on on YouTube. So if you haven't seen it, I'll put a link on this. So any thoughts before I before I close things out? Uh, I'm the leader of this three ring circus. Oh, I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna be. I thought. I thought during this, this during this time you were gonna give me leadership. But go on. No, I. You know, I rarely relinquish power. Fine. <laughs> Is there anything that you would like to discuss before we move on and, cl- and wrap up for the end of the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I love this episode. I love this episode. <laughs> This is why I can't be trusted to have have any sort of authority. Just that uh, hearing them working on, I'm, I suppose that it's not exactly what the head movements that that happen in the anime, which is a lot to ask. That's actually a very difficult thing to I think to translate to live action. But the fact that they actually are putting the effort to give like unique hand gestures that will become like an iconic, like recognizable. Oh, they're about to do this attack. I really appreciate that. I, I am actually very happy about that. I feel like it's going to be like if, if Say is your favorite character, you probably won't like it. But if Say is not your favorite character, you'll appreciate it. Like if if it gets a sequel or if Yoga, you know, shows up and he doesn't do his stupid, absurdly long swan dance before he attacks, I will probably be upset. But I'll I, get and, over it. And, and that was one of the things that actually came in my brain when 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 he was mentioned because like. When you see him do, whenever you see him do the the Aurora execution or diamond dust attack, he's doing like he's doing. He looks like he's doing like a ballet, and he's using his he's using his arms like 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 you know like wings. So there is like a little bit of so there's a little bit of like Hyoga like inspiredness to it. He's using recycled animation so that it saves the animators money. Exactly, <laughs> but it but it looks but it looks cool. It looks when good. We, but when in that, but in that context, it's actually really cool when when you think about it that way. I mean, it's just like natural girl transformations or like Ronin warriors when they attack and stuff like that. The it's it was to save money, but it also became incredibly iconic. So you can't mm-hmm. hate it. All righty then. Yeah. yeah. So Ramses, do you have any final thoughts on the stuff you just said? <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm getting a kick out of this. All right. Can I, can you, can, you, can I enjoy myself for like about like five minutes? Give me like good five minutes to talk about to talk thing. Just to, just to be real with all you guys. I'll give you like 86 seconds. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Okay, no. <laughs> no, but I'll, I'll be quick. I'll be quick. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say to to you, to Bankash, to Scarlet, to Jay, to to Comey, to um, to my to all my friends out there. You know, you guys, my my, my like to Pollux, to to Cesar. To, I'm I'm actually legit crying. I'm I'm not faking it. <laughs> it means so much that you guys. We're behind me, and I'm forever grateful to all of you for giving me this opportunity to do what I have to do. Meeting all the people, meeting meeting guys like Mike DeCostas and you the Nepal, meeting Dan Lars was one of the most best experiences I had in my life, and it means so much that you guys gave me that opportunity and you guys got to be part of it. And I, I just can't stress. cards and the stickers but it was worth it so much because it meant so much at the end and you guys helping me you guys posting everything was one of the best things in the world and that means so much to me and i like my job is not done yet like i like i honestly believe that the right job is done when i see saint say take its rightful place in that like upper echelon where it rightfully should be but stuff like dragon ball sailor moon um naruto and, and all these other series when, once it gets to that point, then I know for a fact that we did it. But for now, for like one day, I look at I look at my wall and and there's there's a there's a there's a thing I I got there's a there, there's a there's like a frame and it has the autographs from Marta Costas, from Ranga Jansen, from Diego Pinoco, from Nathan Eisman, from Nick Stahl, and it's Frank. And I have the badge from the convention. I have my business card and I have the card they gave out at the end of the panel of the of the stunt group. And I look at this. I'm looking at this every day, and I'm going to say to myself that I did this. This was mm-hmm. me, 
And this was not just me. This was the entire fandom. And this was not just and this was people outside the fandom who believed in me. This was for you guys. This was for Furry. This was for Bankos. This was for my friends at Scholar Rhapsody. My friends over, oh, my friends with like, like Comey, the VTuber. So all my other friends, like, you know, Los Caballeros, Kunini, the um, Universal Saint Seiya, to Mal, uh, uh, C, uh, CD, uh, CD, um, CDZ.MX. All those people. This is, this is for you guys. This was all for you. And I'm proud to be, I'm extremely proud to be doing this with you guys. And I'm extremely proud to have done, to be doing a lot of stuff with you guys. And, and just something I want to, like, I won't discuss what, who said this to me, but all I'm going to say is I met, a, I met a fan of the podcast at the camp and they were enamored when they saw me. And some of the messages I got from Twitter were, were some of the beautiful things I ever heard. And I really am appreciative. So I cannot stress this enough that you guys, that everybody, everybody who's listening, everybody who's reposting this everybody who's sharing this everybody who's doing anything with this you guys are, are not, like you guys are just as important to me as everything else and i want you guys to continue that because i think this momentum i want this to continue and i want everybody to um feel i want everybody to i want to feel like i want there to, i want there to be further i want this to i want this play i want this to go even more and i want this to you know i want there to be like a time where we're saying where we don't have to talk about saint says yeah, like this obscure thing but it is something that like it is something that we can talk about as like uh, like one of the big it's one of the big franchises, and I, whether it's going to take the movie to do that, or it's going to take them take someone listening to this podcast that that has a passion for it, listening in, you know, whatever the case is, one like whatever the case is, I felt this week, this weekend, or this last weekend, I felt really empowered, and I felt like this was like one of the best experiences of my life doing this podcast, and made like I, for the first time I felt important, something I, in my personal life I never really felt, and you guys, it was all thanks to everybody. Thanks to you guys. Thanks to everybody involved. And and you you built this. Like we we helped. I'm not above taking credit for things. We helped. But but you I I personally listened to I think the first episode of the podcast. I don't even know if I've ever told you this. But the first episode of the podcast I listened to was either the second or third episode. And I was just casually listening. And I've never been super good at social media. So I and and and. I didn't have any idea if like what your situation was, if you like, cause I've, I've really felt isolated. My best friend tangentially knows about St. Seiya. Uh, not like mostly because, you know, she grew up in the tsunami era too. So she, that that's her extent of it really. Um, and she knows things for me, but for the most part, I have felt very isolated being an English speaker. So I know that to me, this podcast was important. And I think that if it was important to me, that there has to be other people out there that are listening to this, that maybe before then thought that they were the only ones or thought that they, that there wasn't a community for it. And there, there's not a big community, but we're building it. And you, you're the driving force behind that. So you take the credit if you need to. And I just want to want you to remember that, you know, you got to do WonderCon. Ben Haas got to do the symphony. I'm next. I'm next in line. <laughs> you, better, you better. You better be next. I'm gonna make sure you're next. I get. I get to go. Since I get to go do some fun next time. You better. Uh, but no, I'll, make sure, I'll make sure. I'll make sure, I'll, I'll make sure you do. But, but seriously though, like the it. I I 100 like logically there had to be somebody else out there in the English speaking world. It was on television. I'll be it for a brief time. And there's people that organically come across it because of its similar similarities to things like Saint or to Sailor Moon and Ronin Warriors and th like things that are kind of in the same genre. It can be easy to stumble upon, but it's also really easy to feel like you're the only one, like you're the only person in the world that's discovered this thing, or the only person that you can communicate easily with that's discovered this thing. So it really does provide a lot for people out there. And like I said, our community isn't massive yet, but we're we're growing, and it wouldn't be anywhere where it is today without you. I, I sincerely believe that in the in the English speaking realm. To be one hundred percent honest with you, and that's not blowing smoke up your ass or anything like that. That's that's just how how it is. Like you have been pushing for this for several years at this point with the podcast and and through social media and stuff like that. So you deserve this. So don't don't feel like you didn't put in the work either. Like we're, we're here to support you as much as you need, but you did the thing like you, you did it. 
I completely agree. And in my particular case, the thing that I can add is, first of all, everything that you've done, Ramses, it shows. And the effort, the blood, sweat, and tears, if you want to describe it like that, <laughs> while we may not be, while the audience is still growing, but it is growing. And there is a reason for why it continues to grow, because the effort that of the work that you have put in is paving results. And even if it's a slow growth, the results are there. They're tangible. You can see them, and they will continue to 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 grow so long as, as we keep at it. But we would not be we would not be here if it were not for your passion and your dedication to it. I remember like hearing about the podcast at first because th my personal motivation, if I may share that in in this moment, has always been to give Saint Seiya in the English speaking world. I don't want people to love it or to become the the most beloved anime or series of all time in the English speaking sphere. That's not my intention. The only intention that I have is that it gets the respect as that the historical uh, event that it was for its time and that and that in, in a way it continues to be and thanks to you thanks to Cameron Ryder Furry as well that's something that I think if we keep keep at it we're going to be able to achieve that and this particular weekend we were able to see the result of that because the the, the all the, the work that you were doing the information that you were sharing it got it got shout outs to to Pollux and and the guys from Universal Saint Seiya, which is arguably the, the biggest podcast regarding Saint Seiya in the world. And they were using your information to to be mm -hmm. able to provide it for the rest of of the uh, Spanish speaking world. So it, it shows, and and also it's something that it's worth uh, being proud of. And that's what I want to say to you, man. Like it's worth being proud of because you've earned that, and I'm very happy to be here for that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well. I have used up all of my niceness, so Sailor Moon says it's just completely fucked at this point. But this weekend, I'm just gonna be mean because <laughs> all of my nice points got used up with this this speech. Um, but but I again, we super appreciate you. Um, do you since since I'm the de facto leader today, probably only today after my ego trip? <laughs> is there anything that you wanted to plug before we wrap things up, uh, Benhas? I don't really think that I have anything new to add without go getting into spoilery territory. So for now, all I want to say is, I, as usual, I think that in my view, I don't want to change the minds of people that have already had the, their, their mindset of how they feel about the movie. If you don't like what you've seen, you're completely entitled to, to not like the product that is being shown. And you don't really have to watch it if you don't want to. But if you even have the, like the slightest open-mindedness to, to just check out the project and to see the results for itself and to then make an opinion based on the, on, on the finished product, then I encourage you to do so if it's in your possibility. And again, uh, getting to what you mentioned before, obviously being cautious and taking all the precautions needed for your area and for your zone, wherever you may be watching or hearing. So I, I personally am excited for this movie. I've said that before. And I continue to see things that make me enthusiastic about it. So I'm just excited to, for things to come. I, I really want to see how this goes. Where can we find you online, just to remind the folks? All righty. Uh, you can find me at my Twitter account, which is my main social media uh, place and probably where you can find me the most, which is at MexicanGeek502. I post, uh, like, it's my personal account, but I, I, sh I post 90% of stuff since I related or stuff <laughs> from other geek media on that. And you can also find me on my Instagram account, uh, which is uh, Crateris Benges, uh, and where, it's where I'm going to be posting, like, mostly Saint stuff, particularly my illustrations, which, by the way, I want to add, I finally finished another <laughs> illustration after 100 years. But it's done, so hopefully that's one of many more to come. So uh, hopefully you, you like the art that, that I provide. I'm also, again, I'm working on something. I hope I can finally announce it by the next, by the time of the next episode, and hopefully that that'll be exciting as well. But for now, you can find me there. Ben Hust is emerging from the Rita Repulsa dumpster. Like after ten thousand years, I have artwork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ravi, see you. I gotta go back. Okay. Okay. Ramses, what what do you gotta do? What do you got? Okay, um, you can find our you can find me and Conrad Writer for each other podcast. We host the, we, uh, we call it Settle Moon Says. It's on Anchor.fm forward slash SM Says. Uh, we are like this week. Well, last week we had our good. I had my good friend um, Scarlett on the show. It was a really fun episode. This week we are going to be discussing some really tragic episodes with my other good friend VTuber by the name of Comey. Can't mm -hmm. wait for that because I, we I was actually watching a few episodes of that of that particular arc beforehand at when I was at when I was at the convention. 
and I was just like, wow, these episodes are so good. Like they're like no no kidding. Like these are actually some really fun episodes. I can't wait to be good to get into that stuff when we get to it. I also another podcast called the the, the Saturday Morning Squad. You can find that at http going back to backslash Saturday 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 AM Squad dot Tumblr dot com. Saturday AM Squad dot Tumblr dot com is you can find it. Uh, we're kind of we're sporadic. Um, you know, whenever we feel like um recording episode because like because of what's what's happening with Rob, so that it might be kind of difficult. So you gotta look out for that. Um, if you want to know more in depth about like I am when I what I've been what I did at WonderCon itself in terms of like what I like out stuff of outside of the Salem the Saint Seiya stuff, I'm gonna be on the I'm, I'm gonna be on another podcast called um called Convention Tea with Scarlet and Jay. Um, where it looks like we're, it's gonna be up. Uh, it looks like we're gonna be recording this Saturday, April first. So mm-hmm. be on the lookout for that. I'll post more information on our uh, on you know our social media and where you can find that out. Um, for the most part, I'm not going to regurgitate the same information. For the most part, it's just going to be talking about like, oh, I did this, and I, I got to go to this panel. I got to do, I got to go, mm-hmm. I got to see this. I got to buy this, and I got to like make these jokes. And I got to buy that, and so it's, it's stuff like that. Matter of fact, I didn't yeah, really her, pay much. I didn't really buy much. Pod- fact, go on. I was just saying their podcast is more focused on like convention, the convention as a whole. Like their uh, convention preservationist, I think, is how she worded yes. it the last time we talked. Yes, so it's, 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 gonna be, it's gonna be a much broader view. So it's not it's still it's still information that if you're interested is definitely worth checking out. It's not gonna be like you listen to the same podcast twice. They're gonna be talking about a lot more than just these two panels. Yeah. Yeah, like just here, like because because of the sake of Saint Seiya, like I, I went for I, I do a discussion of those two panels, but like they did other things. Not too many things, but I did a lot of things. Mm. But you get to also get to hear my stories of like how I was just like erratic and like irrational and like not knowing where the hell I am when I came back. <laughs> mm. So on to you. <laughs> oh, you didn't plug your socials. <laughs> okay, plug my socials. My socials are Ella underscore Ramsey, so you can see my man man. It's, I have I have, a, I have an Instagram which is at l dot l dot eight three. That's on that's on Instagram and that's where I just post random things. That's why I post like toys and stuff like that. I buy and stuff like that because I buy toys a lot. I need help. And that's it. Well, I am Common Rider Furry, as I've said many times, because I love people knowing my name. Um, I uh, am also on Silly Moon Says. I have my own podcast that is in limbo for right now. Um, I actually did get a resolution to some of the happenings that are going on in my life. So I think I feel pretty good coming back relatively soon. Um, I'm going to discuss with a couple of my guests. Um, probably this weekend as to what kind of time frame we want to set up for a comeback for our second half of season two after our very long break but that is ancient anime at ancient anime pod on twitter and on instagram if you want to follow me specifically it's at common rider furry on both of those my um twitter is inane ramblings like it could be literally anything from live tweeting drag race to talking about whatever Sailor Moon episodes I'm I'm watching for Sailor Moon says or Saint Say episodes that I'm watching for this. It could be weird memes that I make. I actually made a meme while I was <laughs> recording today. Sorry. Um it's just my brain just works at a, mi- a million miles a minute. Um but I'll post that when the episode comes out. But yeah, you can follow me on there. And then I also just started a new Twitter or sorry, a new um Instagram it, specifically man. for my dolls. Um, because they were kind of taking over my Instagram, and I kind of wanted to keep my Instagram more of the weeby um, Japanese like figures and stuff that it had been before. So I decided to separate that, and that is the doll furry on Instagram that you can follow me there. Of course, please go and follow us as a whole here at ST Cosmocast on those venues as well. We have a website link that Ramses is going to say now because I'm a terrible host and I can't remember it very well. It's at scosmocast.com. Yeah, this is scosmocast.com. www.cosmocast.com. Okay, now edit in me saying scosmocast.com. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so you can you can go there, and we will have links to all the episodes and the different formats and places that you can listen to the podcast if you want different experiences or if you use both apps and things like that. And as always, just please remember everybody out there. You know, we're really gearing up for the movie, so it's more important than ever to keep burning that Cosmo. Again, I am Common Rider Furry. I've got Ramses and Ben Haas here for you, and we hope you have a great day. Keep Bye. burning that Cosmos. Keep burning that I Cosmos. I said it. I said that. No, you did it. You didn't I say did. it right. Listen. 
It's my podcast now. <laughs>